It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. We have a great panel for you. Sam Abul Samet, our car guy, joins Father Robert Ballas here, the digital Jesuit, and Doc Rock from Hawaii. We're going to talk about Black Friday shopping. It looks like people aren't going into stores anymore. Apple sues the NSO group. What can we do about bad guy hackers and making them better? And then a couple of rats who have learned to play Doom. It's all coming up next on Twit. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is, is Twit. Twit. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 851, recorded Sunday, November 28th, 2021. Doomtown Rats. This episode of This Week in Tech is brought to you by BlockFi. BlockFi's Bitcoin Rewards credit card lets you earn an unlimited 1.5% back in Bitcoin on all qualifying purchases, plus a bonus of $25 in crypto after you make your first purchase. Sign up today at BlockFi.com slash twit. And by Podium. Join more than 100,000 businesses that already use Podium to streamline their customer interactions. Get started free at Podium.com slash twit. Or sign up for a paid Podium account and get a free credit card reader. Restrictions apply. And by Stamps.com. Save time and money this holiday season with Stamps.com. Sign up with the promo code TWIT for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code TWIT. And by Ignite. Learn more about how Ignite can protect your business from ransomware and see why it's rated number one for data security by real customers in G2 Crowd. Start your free trial today at Ignite.com. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we get together and talk about the week's tech news, of which there is a serious dearth, but that's why I put together three of my favorite BSers to fill the to stretch and fill the time <laughs> Sam Abul Samet is here he's great he's a car guy uh, joins us on the radio show every week and he's been on the show many times principal uh, researcher at Guidehouse Insights but you're not just an analyst for cars at Guidehouse you do all kinds of stuff uh, all, all sorts of transportation. Um, yeah. I focus on on automotive, but we also have one of my colleagues that's focused on aviation. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm interested in all kinds of topics. You know, so I, I can I can talk about just about anything and at least make it sound reasonably authoritative. Even if <laughs> and that's why you're here today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> His podcast. He does it with Robbie Baldwin. We we love Robbie and Nicole, and uh, that's uh, Wheelbearings.media. Great to see you, Sam. Also great to go to the great state of Hawaii. Hawaii, and say hello to Doc Rock. Aloha. 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 How's it going? Good to see you. Well, uh, as we get ready for the holiday season, we'll kick you with Mele Kalikimaka. Mele Kalikimaka is the Hawaii. I'm doing the Bing Crosby yeah. now. As, uh, That's almost right. That's almost right. You're pretty good. You remembered it. Mele Kalikimaka is the Hawaiian way. Anyway, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. It starts tonight. Uh, great huh. to have you, Doctor of the Rockter. And so all much. the way from Vatican City, you were here on Halloween. Thank you for filling in. That show was legendary with Ian Thompson. Uh, that was we, fun. We thought, that was a good one. Oh, my God. Brianna Wu and you and Ian, what a team. We brought Robert back because he's also very good at filling time. <laughs> 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 I'm being honest. I'm that's, just being honest. That's my here. official job title yeah. here. I, I'm yeah. the time filler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically, uh, yeah. Okole Maluna. What does that mean? That means cheers. If you're going to have a toast, you go ah. Okole Maluna. Okay. Okole uh, but Maluna. I think everyone yeah. likes to say that because Okole translated is your, you know, rear end. So <laughs> everybody <laughs> likes that. So every, once what's anyone the, learns that, that's minute. their favorite what's Hawaiian What's the thing? literal translation of Okole Maluna? You know, like we're gonna Here's party, we're rear? gonna turn up. Oh, okay. no! You think bottoms about the idea, up. you're gonna turn oh, up. It's bottoms, bottoms up. up. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you yeah, go. Yeah, Okole yeah. Maluna. Okole yeah. Maluna. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I should check in. We're we're waiting. Kind of. It's kind of uh, depressing. Here we are. We're closing in now on the two year mark uh, of COVID nineteen, 
And uh, if you'd asked me last, you know, in spring of 2020, if we would be still headed into this in the Christmas 2021, I would have said, oh, no, by now it's going to be great. You know, it's the Roaring Twenties, et cetera. And now we've got the Omicron, a new COVID vi variant coming out of, uh, well, we're not sure where it came from, but South Africa is the most recent uh, source. And we don't know yet how bad it's going to be, but it doesn't look good. How are things in Vatican City? How are you doing, Robert? Is it, are you scared? We're actually pretty you? good. So okay. uh, rates are staying low uh, because they're, basically everyone here is vaccinated. There's an incredibly small group that's refusing to get vaxxed, that doesn't like wearing masks, that doesn't Can't like the Pope pass. just say vax? Wasn't, I thought for a while that he was against vax. He wasn't, like he didn't want to get No, vaccinated. never. No, he's this, always been This pro. Pope has okay. never been against vaccine. Okay. And okay. in fact, you cannot be in the Vatican. So the Vatican proper, if you are not vaccinated, Good. period. Good. Oh, I know what it was. He didn't want to wear a mask for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that that wasn't a medical thing. That was a religious thing. Yeah, he's the pope. Uh, he, he People want to see his Correct. mouth. Yeah, I understand. Correct. Yeah, that I completely get. Well, good. I'm glad you're you're doing well. And you're you're coming. You said you're coming back home in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, two weeks. Uh, assuming that nothing gets locked down, I'm going to be flying back to the states for about a month. Great. And uh, again, assuming that COVID doesn't go out of control, I might even brave CES. Oh, that's just nuts. <laughs> That's hey, I'm scheduled to be there. Are you going, Sam? Really? Yeah. I'm oh. registered, and I've got somebody putting me up there. So we'll see. I mean, you know, if if things get really bad between now and the beginning of January, that may change. But right now, that is the yeah. tentative plan. January 5th through 8th in Las Vegas, the show formerly known as the Consumer Electronics Show CES. Uh, is it going? How is it going to be different? Is it going to be like a traditional CES? Like the 2020 They're trying version? to make it. We don't like know. Like a traditional. Oh, yeah. man. But, but here's it. I might just ignore the floor and do the suites and the special events. The smaller events where you can be a bit more controlled and you can set appointments with people who you want to talk to. Rather than walking the floor and being in that Petri dish of the convention center. 1,700 uh, exhibiting companies. That seems a little lower than usual. Uh, they are requiring proof of vaccination to attend. So mm -hmm. while, you know, in, in months past, that might have been reassuring. Now I'm not so, now with Omicron, I'm not so uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it's one of those wait and see things. Why do you even care? What, is there any, re I don't think missing CES is a bad thing. It, for me, it's connections. It's not the tech. I can see the tech it's anywhere. The people. But it's the people. Yeah. I miss those people. It's yeah, that's the same for me. I, you know, meeting up with people, in, especially with a lot of new it's companies. It's your job, in person. too, right? Yeah. There's a lot of automotive technology, especially these days. With You introduced us to Mobileye, a big LiDAR company. So it, there's a lot of stuff that you need to see and meet and find out about, I guess. Yeah, and, and, and like Robert, I'm, I mostly just, you know, um, have meetings with people. I spend very little time actually roaming the floor you know, except to get from one meeting to another. So, uh, you know, I, mm -hmm. I don't just browse around. I, you know, my schedule, usually by mid-December, probably within the next couple of weeks, I will have a full schedule from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Every day I'm there and dinners with different companies each evening. Well, and Mari Barra, Mary Barra will be back CEO of GM to give one of the keynotes. Last uh, CES, last year, that's when she announced quite a bit of... Uh, New technology for GM, including their focus on electric vehicles. That'll be interesting. Uh, Lisa Sue from AMD is also keynoting. Um, of course, she's she's been every year for the last few years. She's been very consistent. Um, it'll be interesting. Uh, and by invitation only, Liz Clayman, anchor Fox Business. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, okay, fine. All right. Yeah. I guess I won't get that uh, invitation. Same thing with the CEO of Peloton. Um, maybe they're trying to restrict uh, who can who can pester them with questions. Um, you know, Leo, uh, a few years back, there were a few companies that were pitching these remote presence teleconferencing units right. that were basically iPads on a Segway. Yeah, yeah, we had one. Yeah. 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 I, I think that should be the CES it's time. attendee. <laughs> it's time. Make everybody go in remote. 
And then, then you that was the last Macworld, Leo. Remember, <laughs> they were they were cruising around the last Macworld, yes. and every, we thought it was cool, but it was so far ahead of the game, it seemed right. gimmicky then. Now it would just be completely it was a, rad. I think now, in hindsight, it was a sign of the times. It was what it really was. I just right. don't understand why these conferences continue. You've given the only reason, really, Robert, is to, to go right. see people. Uh, but I don't even know if you need to do that so much anymore. We're entering a new world where telepresence is the is the norm not the exception it's not the same though um you know i've done a lot of virtual conferences over the last two years and you know it's better than nothing but it's it's really hard to have those uh spontaneous hallway conversations with people you know mm -hmm. online in a virtual room it's just it, it isn't the same you don't meet as many people you don't get as much out of it that way well, and as one of our chatters, Web6205, is saying, CES has always been a super spreader event. We just never... We, yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, I mean, everybody goes home sick from that, usually just a cold. Um, but if there's a worse germ to spread... we I thought we dodged a bullet in 2020. Uh, January 2020, uh, there were a, at least a few attendees. Now we know who had COVID-19, a few people who got it, but it did not spread wildly through the uh, conference as it could that have. That we know yeah, of. We normally just we came home from conferences with a bad hangover. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's a little I, bit Ironically, 20, 2020 was the first CES where I did not catch anything. Really? Yeah, me uh, neither. Nothing. Come, come to think uh, of it. I, I haven't for the last four or five years. Well, if you're prudent, you wash your hands a lot, which I did. I think uh, I'm going to wear masks from now on to any big events like that. Uh, that just seems sensible. There's people from all over the world. You don't know what kind of super bug could be. There is that San Francisco startup that has that fishbowl helmet. I, I kind of want to, if they'll let me borrow it, I will wear that all the way through CES. Oh, I this want one. it. Fish. That's okay. funny. What's the name of the company? I might buy oh, one. I, I can't it. remember, but it's it's like a filtered. It's a powered filtered unit, so it's entirely enclosed. There was a reporter who wore it for a day around San Francisco. Uh, now, if they'll loan that to me, I will wear it the entire time. Uh, and it looks geeky, which is perfect. That's right up my alley. Okay. Uh, wow. Um, I'm going to give I'm, you the name. I'm it. trying to find it now. This this looks like it. Is this is this the picture? Yeah, this is Microclimate. it. Microclimate. Yeah, yeah. That's so, it. Microclimate's air helmet. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, Uh-oh. Yep, that's it. That's it. It looks futuristic. <laughs> in a bad way. <laughs> Microclimate.com. This may be a new sponsor we should really be talking to. Do you have to wear a backpack with the with the air? Oh, it's got HEPA filters in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, two twin tri-speed fans, full-faced fog-resistant acrylic dome, six-foot USB-C cable. <laughs> okay. I do, do want you know what this. this reminds me of? Do you remember the Besides film? Besides Westworld? The Black Hole. Oh, yeah. The, the, the Black Hole, the, yeah. the Disney film. This is like the, the, the helmet that the robots wore. Yeah. And um, last year during the early, like during the spring of last year, during the early part of the lockdowns, uh, Ford was actually making some, manufacturing something like this after they had to shut down the car plants. They were manufacturing a device very much like this. It wasn't quite as cool looking as this one, but it was basically the same idea. It was called um, a powered, uh, powered air purifying respirator. <laughs> And what they were doing, you know, it was it was a hood that you put it's over your head, magnetic. and they were actually taking um, the sense, ventilation yeah. fans from F one fifties. Oh wow! And they repackaged it and it had a hose coming in the back, and it had HEPA filters. White and scarf available as an optional purchase, so you don't have to be. You could be a a, a white guy. So, um, do you sound like Darth Vader remember? though? Yeah, there's Hello. there's no speaker, so I am here from the future. <laughs> you better learn sign language. Uh, I'm really tempted to get one of these. I know why this came I off in not San Francisco, you. though. Oh, no. Um, so. The people in San Fran would be piping in some little cannabis in there and you know, just keeping oh. it stuck this, in. It, oh. they, they, actually, they would sell this as a portable hotbox. Yeah. So you don't have to like hotbox the whole oh. car. You can just stay to yourself. <clears throat> I think this oh. would be a good thing. If you're going to CES, you should really wear this. Uh, oh, three hundred dollars! Holy cow! That's actually actually that's a lot uh, cheaper than it was six hundred when they first did the story. So this oh, that's right. much better. The, oh, the, the uh, Black Friday special. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
Unfortunately, eight week lead time, so you won't get it in time for CES. Oh. So, oh. sorry, kids. You're just gonna have to. Well, go maybe on you could own. just buy one and then share it with like twenty people. I'm Jeez. sure that's better. Right? <laughs> That'll work better. Black Friday was a little impacted, I think, uh, by the pandemic. Uh, Black Friday sales, according to Adobe, which measures these, said traffic at brick and mortar retail stores was down 28 percent from 2019 levels. It was up from last year. Of course, it was really off last year. Uh, but it was up 47% compared with one year. But the pre-pandemic, it's still down by almost a third. Some of that is COVID, but I think Natural. a lot of it is you can buy online now. Why would yeah, you Yeah, I was going to say, store? some of this is conflation. Yeah. This was happening prior to the the pandemic, right? I know for me personally, and maybe I'm just being anecdotal to myself, from like three, four years ago, I was like, I'm not leaving this chair. I'm pressing buttons. I'm ordering everything, <laughs> shipping things to people's house. So I don't even need to go drop it off. Like I was just trying to make my life a lot easier. <laughs> so I pretty much believe a large portion of this was already happening. And then it just got, you know, sort of uh, rapid charged recently because of the pandemic. Fr Lisa and her sister used to go on Black Friday, get up at three in the morning and go, you know, to the doorbuster specials at Target. I, I did that wait in, in, line. in the past. So uh, her sister's over for Thanksgiving. Lisa says, we're getting up early. She says, no, of course not. <laughs> Friday morning, Lisa wakes up. She's got a 50 emails. I'm going to be doing some shopping. Don't bug me. So, yeah. Wait, I think did Target, Target announce that they're not doing Black Friday ever? No, again, right? they're doing they, it. They're not opening uh, on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Which is, frankly, why does anybody open on Thanksgiving? Have That's some. Just, have the, some. the only thing I could see opening on Thanksgiving you know, is some grocery stores, you know, maybe until up until noon, if you need those last-minute supplies for, yeah. for dinner. Please. But that's it. Be Starbucks. nice to your employees. Starbucks, because yeah. I got to... You know, Starbucks here, I don't know if this is true everywhere, is now the teenage hangout. Maybe because we don't have a mall... But as malls die uh, all over the country, I think teen, I mean, young, like kids in high school are all hanging out at Starbucks now. It's jammed yeah. with them. Is that That's the case the in Hawaii? All, all, yes, it is very much so the case here in Hawaii. But I think part of that is twofold. Uh, when we were kids, we may have had coffee in the house with our parents in the morning, but like coffee wasn't part of our culture because the cafe like that sort of cafe style didn't exist. Um, and, you know, not that that's a bad thing, but the, the ability to just sit down, conversate, study together, do things that like yeah, in the library, we, had to, yeah. we had to be quiet when we studied. There weren't a lot of places where we can go and study and didn't get shushed all the time unless you wanted to study outside, which is not a good look in the East Coast when it's freaking freezing. <laughs> so I think that one thing that Starbucks did is it did give that sort of co-working type space and more and more people adopted it. Now, prior to, say, the young kids coming there, the other thing that it was here, it was the place where you saw lots of circle drawing. It became the MLM, let me sign some people up spot. It was the oh, office yeah? of people who didn't have offices. Oh, Everybody yeah? was drawing circles at Starbucks. And it's like, <laughs> no, I don't want to get an Amway. I know you named it seven different names. It's still Amway. Leave me alone. <laughs> Did, so that's interesting. Did there was there, remember the um, this is way back when the airplane fad that you would get on an airplane it was just basically a, a pyramid scheme, but it it ripped through Northern California about twenty years ago. You'd get on the airplane and you'd get money from the person behind you. It wasn't a real airplane; it was all imagined. What? It doesn't ring a bell. Okay, maybe it's just me. It was uh, a pyramid scheme. Back, it was a pyramid scheme, <laughs> which MLM kind of similar, <clears throat> frankly. No, it, it is the same. It's the same. And frankly, I'm starting to wonder about crypto. What is going... Crypto's... Okay, parenthetically, completely... Uh, we'll get back to Black Friday in a bit. But, <laughs> uh, I'm watching the World Chess Championship, right? Uh, did you know what's going on right now? Game 3 was this morning at 4 a.m. Pacific time. It's going on right now. So uh, Magnus Carlsen versus Nepo... Uh, Nepo, they call him. Jan Nepomanchi, uh, the Russian. Um... All the advertisers, almost all of them, crypto. Crypto.com. These guys have so much money. Crypto.com just named the Staples Center. Isn't That's that? what I was going to say. Crypto.com That's crazy. 
That's all the crazy. Ads are First crypto. of all, nobody goes to Staples, so I get it. But wow, talk about a flip to something super left. Like, really, we don't do office supply store like before. That was a dope spot to go. Not but anymore. Not anymore. Crypto.com <laughs> arena for the Staples Center. That's a sign it's of the times. A, oh, my god. It's goodness. a sign of the times. No more office supply stores. That's so 90s. Now it's crypto. It's, it's like a scene out of Free Guy. When I first heard that story and the people in L.A. were losing their mind over it, which, again, I'm like, was the last time you straight up walked to the Staples? Tell the truth. But, yeah, it just seemed like a scene out of, out of free, free Guy, yep. Ryan Reynolds, yep. like it's a joke, Crypto.com Arena. Yep. Crazy, man. Crazy. It does. It sounds like something that would be in uh, Idiocracy or some idiocracy, kind of yeah. dystopian future. <laughs> Every, you know, just, just out of sight. Here, by the not way. a week. It's here. Just, huh? just out of spite against companies that that buy naming rights to venues, I refuse. You know, if there's a venue that originally had a name, I refuse to call it by the the sponsor's name. Like here in Michigan, we have Pine Knob Music Theater. It's an open air amphitheater yeah. music yeah. venue. For the last 15, 20 years, it's been branded as DTE Energy Music Theater. Oh, forget it. It's like, no, it's Pine, Pine Knob. Knob. Why I will always yeah. call it Pine Knob. The problem That's with Staples Center, it never had another name. It was, well, yeah. it was always Staples Center. So I was just talking to somebody about the Tappan Zee Bridge, which is the bridge we used to go to Grandma's house over. He said, now it's the Governor Mario M. Cuomo. Mario Bridge. Mario Cuomo. Yeah. And, oh, Leo, well, I just came back because I had to do a, a conference in uh, New York. And, you know, after a week or so, Avius, you know, they sent me my little report. And I didn't pick up the easy pass because I'm like, I'm not going to cross any toll bridges. No biggie. Man, $11 each <gasps> direction to ride. What? <laughs> Freaking Governor Cuomo Bridge. What? And I grew bucks. up as the, that, I grew up as that the tap. Checks okay? out. Yeah. The tap. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up as it's the tap. Like, you know, that that in the Triborough Bridge, you cross them suckers a couple of times, and I got told up to like 156 oh bucks to spend a week in the city. Oh I was like, God. what just happened? And they're like, yeah, you should have bought the easy pass for 80 bucks, but it seemed like such a rib. I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Oh, I have just been away from home so pass. long I forgot. There's a that's a good tip for anybody going to New Jersey. Get or the, or anywhere where pass. they have toll roads. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, well, there's that. Is yeah, that don't. the tip? Yep, years ago, <laughs> yeah, years ago, I had to. I was driving to uh, Pittsburgh for something, and I stopped uh, when I got into Ohio before I got on the Ohio Turnpike and bought an Easy Pass transponder from a gas station. Went online, signed up, and just stuck it on the dashboard. You know, because and I because I drive different cars all the time. Just whatever I'm driving, I just take it and stick it in the car whenever I'm going somewhere with a toll. If I'm going to Illinois or Pennsylvania or Ohio, and it's so much easier. We may have five dollar gas in California, but the Golden Gate Bridge is still only five bucks, and it's only one way. It's free coming back. So uh, <laughs> I guess it all evens out, doesn't it? That's and, the and pay. If you Why are they going to really, charge you really both cheap. directions? <laughs> in, in the Bay Area, if you were super cheap, you actually can ride all of the bridges in the Bay Area without ever paying. You just have to keep circling the Just go the backwards. Bay yeah, you just got to go counterclockwise. That's all. It's simple. <laughs> Meanwhile, Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a roundabout. We've been going counterclockwise. Uh, traffic. Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, online sales was getting back back up to the number, the prior number, uh, nine billion dollars uh, last year on Black Friday. Eight point nine billion. I guess that's effectively the same this year. Uh, so people are buying online. They're just they're not just not going to going to stores. Um, and of course, it's the other thing that's changed, and one of the reasons it might be down slightly this year is it's really. It's really Black November. Those deals go continue at least for four or five days. It'll continue through Cyber Monday. I think this whole shopping thing has changed quite a bit. This is the success well, of online, isn't it? We don't do I, seasonal I, shopping anymore. Right. That's, that's yeah. no longer our thing. Amazon has sales throughout the years, and uh, people can just pick up what they want when they need it. There's no longer that artificial demand that's, that's created towards the holiday season where you have to buy things now because it'll be cheaper than it will ever be. It's it's the same thing that happened to CES. Remember, CES used to be the time where all tech companies, for the three months leading up to CES, wouldn't say a peep because they were saving it all up for the show. Now we don't. Doesn't do that. matter. So, yeah. I have learned something, by the way. Amazon calls these five days between Thanksgiving and Cyber Monday the Turkey Five. So we're in the middle. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're in the middle of the okay. Turkey Five. Okay. Uh, uh, better than Cyber Monday. Yeah. I don't like Cyber Monday is really uh, uh, an anachronism. It comes goes back to the days when people wait didn't <laughs> they didn't shop until they could get to the fast internet at work, and then they would shop online. Right. <laughs> it's been a long time since the internet at work was any faster than the internet at home, and probably in most cases it's slower. So that whole idea is, is I, crazy. I actually did go to Lowe's on Friday because I needed to get a supply hose. What was that like? A new a new dishwasher that was being delivered yesterday. It, there was there were fewer people there yeah. than on a normal yeah. Saturday, yeah. Or Friday. Yeah, we don't yeah. need it, to go was, in anymore. Yeah, there was no crowds at all. In fact, your use case is the only reasonable use case. I need it tomorrow, and in many cases, Amazon now it does. Uh, I needed uh, popover tins, those special tins for making popovers. I ordered it the day before. It came the next day. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. <laughs> So Nine Amazon times out of ten, if I need something in Italy, it is faster to get through Amazon because if I go to any really? of the local stores, they're going to have to specially order it from. Right, me. we have to go to Amazon to get it. So come back tomorrow. <laughs> come back. I'm just waiting for the next show. <laughs> this week in tins, starring Leo. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, top Amazon official said today the online retail giant had a record-breaking Black Friday. Record, they didn't say how much money. They just said record blanking Black Friday. Um, consumers are spending money on clothing, holiday decor, toys for children. There's a slight downturn in electronics purchases, probably the chip shortage, I'm thinking. Uh, or, he says, the spokesperson uh, for Dave Clark, CEO of Amazon Worldwide Consumer, uh, said that uh, also people had already bought their stuff for their home offices because of work from home. So he expects uh, that's one of the reasons there was, this is on Face the Nation, there's less uh, sales. He also commended the miraculous vaccines. <laughs> okay. Oops. Oops. And then asked uh, Brennan uh, on uh, uh, the host of uh, Face the Nation, Margaret Brennan asked um, if Amazon planned on issuing a vaccine mandate for its employees uh, basically said no. He said, we're incentivizing, we're trying to make it easier to do, we're educating our teams, we're not planning to move to mandates as we sit today. So, there you go. Just everything you On need the to good know. side, they, they, they may release the, uh, the requirement for employees to pee into water bottles while on the line. So, <laughs> no I more. Mean, no more. Win-win. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's Black Friday. In a nutshell, we'll have more uh, next week when we get all of the numbers in from... What did he call it? The Turkey Five? The turkey turkey five. 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 Does that make us the stuffing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, six, according to the National Retail Federation, 61% uh, of consumers already started purchasing holiday gifts before Thanksgiving. That's not yep. surprising, right? I've been uh, you just you just do, you know, it's easy now. We them. started just as soon as, you know, cuz here I can actually see the slowdown in shipments because I'm looking at Honolulu Harbor from my window. Oh. And, and that's so right. knowing that and Matin and Pesha like they just haven't been that busy. Um, and one of my brother-in-laws, he's a stevedore here, so even he's been telling me about what's going on at the docks. So we started thinking about stuff that was going to be important from back in August. Oh, that's really interesting. It was going to take a long time. Because everything that comes to Hawaii, Axe, except for coconuts, pineapples, and coffee, has got to come from the mainland. It's shipped in. And, well, not even that. Because of the Jones Act, everything has to go all the way to L.A. first. And then comes back. So the Jones Act has been ruining us since, I don't know, 60-something when they made it or whatever. And it's obnoxious. But certain things, if I order something from Small Rig, it will go all the way to L.A. first and then do whatever it does and then turn around and come back. And, like, we just pass us. It's just silly. Wait a minute. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you're saying if somebody's shipping something from Japan, it can't go mm -hmm. straight to Hawaii. It has to go to L.A. first and then a U.S. shipper has to pick it up and take it to Hawaii. Correct the mundo. That's Including nuts. the glorious food farm that I used to work for. That's nuts. Uh, the Jones Act is a federal law that merit regulates maritime commerce, requires goods shipped between U.S. ports be transported on ships that are built, owned, and operated by U.S. citizens. Well, talk about protectionism. Mundo. Wow. So the, like everything that's made in China, like iPhones, can't go to Honolulu. Yeah. 
has to go to LA. That's what I just said. Yeah, That's what I mean by the glorious listen. fruit farm I was talking That's, to Apple. Oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That fruit farm. I <laughs> thought you were talking Dole. I didn't know. Hey, that too. This says, <laughs> this says between U.S. ports, but if it's coming directly from an overseas, like from China or Japan or Korea, why would it I have to go how to they a do U.S. It. port first? It still goes all the way to L.A. first and turns around and comes back. Just, and we've been trying to get that, like, yeah. thrown out forever. Yeah. Uh, Senator Akaka and every Hawaiian senator, if you ever listen to what they're doing, we've been trying to get rid of that stupid thing for years because it is super obnoxious. So there are, is there a backup of container ships? You're, you're close to Honolulu Harbor. No, uh, I'm looking at it. You're, you're right <laughs> next the to the Aloha Tower. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You see, a, is there a backup, or is just that there are no, not that many ships coming? There are not that many ships coming in, and like I can see where the tugs, you know, pull them in, and when they pull in, because they're like heavy stacked, it takes forever to empty oh, them. Huge, so like, yeah. I can just sit there and watch them empty them, yeah. and normally they can empty it in like a day or two. I swear it takes them like a week and a half to empty one of them things because wow. of just you know. Just inundated with work. Now, can it's, I? It's, but I, you can. I mean, Apple ships by seven forty seven too. They yeah, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could ship direct yeah. to Honolulu by seven forty seven, right? If like coming through air, yes. Yeah. Okay. So normally, whenever I order something from Apple, I just eat it and pay the express because that way I know it won't take forever. Now, were you all good boys, and did you avoid the wire cutter during this turkey Absolutely. five? Absolutely. I would never cross a picket line. And and Father I, Robert, do you know what we're talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> I am I seeing, I'm I, seeing that, I, that deer in the headlight thing from you. So this is something going on in the U.S. The wire cutter, which is owned by the New York Times, has been trying to negotiate for a raise from the New York Times for some time. They're, they're saying, in fact, even outsiders uh, who worked at the New York Times are saying they are really kind of mistreated and considered you know, not, not as good as the New York Times staff. And so they were underpaid. So they went on a strike. They walked out for Black Friday, which, of course, is a huge long weekend for the wire cutter. That's mostly what the wire cutter does during Black Friday. Amazon Prime Black Friday, their staff works long, long hours, sometimes all night, to constantly say, this is a good deal, this is a good deal, this is a good deal, this is you should stay away from. None of that. Uh, and they went out on strike, and they encouraged everybody to boycott it. Uh, and I hope it's working. That's a, that's a thing, actually. Wait, What's like a thing? Yeah. Wait, <laughs> like a professional review, review service to tell you where you buy the up to minute deals? No, you well, don't. Well, because they they go if you go to you shop from the wire cutter, right? They are I'm assuming getting affiliate links and some other stuff like that. Well, oh, yeah, they, 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 was, they, what they also do is links. that's right. They, yeah. they, they yeah. also do research on, you know, they look at what's advertised if it's a good on deal. sales yeah. and tell yeah. you, you know, what is the regular price that this, that this usually sells for. So iMore and does this, so, Thrillist yeah, does it, all, all, of of the, do. all the tech review sites, CNET does it, will do be extra active on Prime Day and on uh, the Turkey 5. I'm calling that from now on, <laughs> <laughs> the Turkey 5, <laughs> because uh, that's the big service that they provide. Plus, they all have affiliate links, so they hope you'll go there, look at a review, say, yeah, that's a good deal, and then click that link, because then they get a I honestly did not know that was a thing. Yeah. Really? Honestly. When Actually, um, when when he first moved here, because when before it sold, uh, B. Lamb, Brian Lamb, sorry, yep. I'll be correct, uh, he moved he here, it. and he used to work out of my co-working space when no I owned kidding. the co-working space. So your yeah, friends. he would just pop, pop in every once in a while, and he would always show up for any of the small business or startup stuff that was going on, just to, just to be in the mix. And uh, yeah, he lives down my head somewhere. So not he was a Gizmodo. Here. In fact, he yeah. was the guy who got the stolen iPhone, as I remember. The iPhone 4 that was found in the bar. <laughs> Not stolen. Lost. And then sold. <laughs> uh, and then later left Gizmodo <laughs> to start the wire cutter. And, it, and then got bought by the Times a couple of years ago. He's probably sitting on the beach right now. And Correct. <laughs> Waialua just for enjoying life and relaxing. Um, so, yeah, I feel bad. Uh, the wire cutter... Generated hundreds of millions of dollars for the New York Times, but was treated as a second-class citizen. They're asking for a 2.5% wage increase, which seems reasonable. The Times offered him 1%. Um, so they went out. Uh, I don't actually haven't gone to the site. I, I presume they've got somebody doing it. <laughs> yeah, they have, they have a bunch of freelancers that have been staffing this site over the last several days. Yeah. 
because they're they're not sta- they're not full time staff, and so they're not part of the union. So they've had them do the do stuff. The work. But there's yeah. there's not enough of them to to do all the coverage. So they're they're overworked as well. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the long of this is that I honored the walkout because I absolutely did not use the wire cutter for. <laughs> <laughs> extra there you, there you go. All right, let's take a little their, break. Their breakdowns are good too. Normally, oh, I, the wire cutter is great. I, I generally uh, trust what they say. Uh, somebody who was it? I want to give them credit. Um, oh, I can't remember. One of the uh, tech blogs uh, said. This is the best strike for you right now, which is a take on the wire cutter's line. You know, the best remote, you know, Wi-Fi router for you right now. <laughs> so uh, good, good on you guys. Uh, we're we're in support. Uh, I believe it. And but don't any of you go on strike, because <laughs> no, actually, uh, if you wanted to unionize, John, it'd be you and Burke. But you could, you could. <laughs> I wouldn't Those meetings yet. would be hilarious. I'm a, hey, I'm a union member. I'm after SAG. I believe in it. I've been a union member my whole life. And I can't wait to get that union pension. That's going to be good. Our, uh, that's why I keep doing ads. Our show today brought to you. Oh, I, this is a, speaking, of, speaking of crypto. BlockFi. Here's a great way to get into crypto without buying crypto. The BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards Credit Card. This is so cool. Lisa loves it. She has one. Uh, it's a beautiful black card. It's a Visa signature card, which is the best card you can get anyway. So you get all the benefits of a Visa signature card, plus 1.5% back in Bitcoin on all qualifying purchases. And no reward limits. It's just the easiest way to get into crypto, but just doing what you normally do, making everyday purchases. You'll grow your Bitcoin portfolio when you buy groceries, pay your bills, fill up at the gas station, whatever you buy. In fact, we took it uh, when we went to Mexico because it's a Visa signature card. There's no annual fee, no foreign transaction fees. So for our trip to Mexico for Halloween, Lisa pulled out the black card. It's also got that Bitcoin logo on it, which is very cool. And earn Bitcoin in every single qualifying purchase. What a great idea. Now is a good time to get into Bitcoin. Uh, the beauty is you're not speculating. You're just earning Bitcoin, which did see a fairly good return. I think 230% annualized in 2020. Uh, Yahoo Finance called Bitcoin the best performing asset of the last decade, outperforming the NASDAQ 100 by 10 times. BlockFi's been there for a while. They're a leader in crypto. They were named to Forbes FinTech 50 list in 2021. And so the nice thing is you're earning Bitcoin, but you have an account at BlockFi now. You can buy and sell and earn crypto and of other kinds. There's no better time to sign up and start earning Bitcoin today. Of course, just turn it into dollars. You can do that, too. Right now, you'll get a bonus of $25 in crypto after you make your first purchase with the credit card when you sign up at BlockFi.com slash twit. B-L-O-C-K-F-I. BlockFi.com slash twit. $25 bonus in crypto. It'll be deposited right into your account right after you make your first purchase. But you got to use that address to qualify. Start earning Bitcoin back on all your qualifying purchases today. BlockFi.com slash twit. Terms and conditions. Not all will be eligible. Geographic, regulatory, and underwriting restrictions apply. Fees and terms are subject to change. Additional terms of service at BlockFi.com. BlockFi is a financial technology company. Banking services provided by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. Remember that address. Use it, please, so they know you saw it here. BlockFi.com slash twit. Pretty soon we're going to call this the Crypto.com Studios, I think. That's the next... <laughs> Next hey, uh, Leo. Okay. Yes. The, the, the Sears did, Tower did is on its what? Its third renaming. Sears Tower. What do they call it these days? What? 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 Sam. Uh, I was just going to ask if Lisa sent that Bitcoin uh, refund uh, to your locked wallet. <laughs> no, she oh, better not no. use that address. <laughs> she could, by the way. That number. She knows it. Uh, it's now the Willis Tower. It was the Sears Tower. Um, I, th I think it's only been renamed the one time from Sears to Willis. It was which it seems, other one? They just renamed another building, and I it's it never takes. No one calls it. That. Everyone calls it the original. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. We still call it Ypsilanti, not uh, Ford City, right? Like uh, Candlestick Park it, it, was Candlestick yeah. Park until oh, they tore it down. Yeah, yeah. But now the yeah. Pac Bell Park became AT and T Park. No, wait a minute. There were stuff in between. SBC. SBC. Yeah, yeah I right. don't even know what it's called these days. I think it's ATT, right? I don't know. 
I don't, I don't know. It's still packed. I still call it packed. I call it Pac Bell Park, the Giants uh, Stadium in San Francisco. Apple has gone to court. I think this is uh, really interesting to sue Israel's NSO, NSO group for making spyware that breaks Apple's iPhone. Uh, they want to stop them from using any of their technology. Now, this lawsuit uh, was uh, waiting until it became clear that they could sue. Um, there was another lawsuit against the NSO group, and I'm trying to remember the details of that, which was initially thrown out. Um, and I think it was, who was it by? Was it by... Oh boy. Well, you know, the, the problem is even if they manage to succeed and Facebook. shut down NSO, NSO group. Yeah. Yeah. You know, these guys are just going to pop up yeah. under another name or they're going to go, you know, more than likely most of the, the, the team working there came out of the Israeli intelligence service as so many of the, the people in the Israeli crypto security or, you know, uh, cybersecurity uh, startup community does, they may just end up going back and just working for the Israeli intelligence service right. again. In fact, Israel, when uh, when President Biden uh, uh, called for sanctions, and they did issue sanctions uh, on the NSO group, Israel says, stop it. This is an important part of our economy. They're trying to defend them. Facebook sued the NSO group uh, in, in a lawsuit saying they exploited a bug ex in the WhatsApp messaging system. And that lawsuit was initially, a trial judge uh, refused it. Uh, they, uh, let's see, it was appeal. So the trial judge in, 20, in July of 2020 threw it out saying they're protected because they're foreign officials acting in an official capacity. Um, Oh, both of the suits, they hinge on the violation of the, of the terms of service. Right. So both that's, Apple and Facebook it. are claiming that, yes, you can do security research. We can't outlaw that. But you're not allowed to violate the terms of service in doing that research. And yeah. in both cases, the NSA group, uh, NSO group required Apple and Facebook IDs so that they could send the malform packets to targets and infect the phones. So you have to, in, a, in effect, the, use yeah. those services. Yeah. So let me get this. You have to get, agree to it in order to get the ID right. properly. Let me get this straight. So Facebook sued. The trial judge said that you can sue. Facebook appealed. And now in a 3 nothing decision, the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in the Ninth Circuit has uh, reaffirmed the judge's ruling that the NSO group is not immune from being sued. It is not acting as a government agent. It is a privately owned company. So that lawsuit goes on. Immediately after that decision, Apple sued NSO group as well for the, basically the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Craig Federighi said, uh, state-sponsored actors like the NSO group spend millions of dollars on sophisticated surveillance technologies without effective accountability. And that has to change. Uh, right on. Go after them. Um, Microsoft this and Google is so filed an amicus step, brief uh, supporting the Facebook lawsuit. And the reason uh, this is an issue, as, as you said, it's the, the economy of this. So hackers mm -hmm. right now, if they find a zero day, have a number of choices. If I find a zero day that allows me to exploit an iPhone, I can go to Apple and say, hey, I found a zero day what's called responsible disclosure. Apple does have a bug bounty for that that might amount to maybe fifty, a dollars $100,000. You take the money, Apple fixes it, it goes public, it's done. You could also go to, there are a number of companies like Zerodium that on behalf of companies, Zerodium's one of the good guys, the premium exploit, actually, are they one of the good guys? I can't remember now. Is it Zimperium or Zerodium? I think Zerodium might be a bad guy. We pay big bounties the world's leading exploit acquisition platform. So um, I know I think Zerodium's good. We talk about this on security now all the time. Zimperium is the one that had a zero day, a huge zero day, and they didn't use it. Yeah. So uh, Zerodium takes money from the companies, buys these back, maybe even for more money. So you could go to them. But there's always, if you've got a really good zero day, a, a zero click zero day for an iPhone. The people who are going to pay the most for this are, are groups like the NSO group because they're going to sell them for the most 
to company to countries like Turkey uh, and uh, Bahrain who will pay a million dollars because they'll use these one or two times to hack particular people, typically dissidents, journalists, sometimes terrorists. Well, well that's 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 their their business model. So they are not selling the exploit. They're selling the use of the exploit. They want to keep the exploit because the longer they hold on to it exclusively, the more they can milk out of potential customers. Now, if this suit goes forward and it's it turns out that NSO cannot use accounts to send these exploits, then they could just change their business model to sell the zero day exploits to anybody who wants them. And let now, them it's not and then as let profitable them use them. an account. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Exactly. So it's not going to stop the exploits. It's they're they're just going after the profit center. So okay. So I'm a a tin horde dictator in a two bit country, and I don't like it that this journalist is writing articles about how corrupt I am. I go to NSO Group and I say, how much to hit this guy? They say a million dollars. I give them a million dollars. They use. They don't give me anything. Any code. Correct. They use their uh, Apple messaging account to infect the journalist's phone with malware, does that then give the two-bit tin horn dictator access to the malware, or does NSO Correct. run the whole thing? Okay. Well, so, uh, so they can they can run it any way they want it. They can either have it shuttled directly to the dictator, or they can shuttle it to their. I would assume that it goes directly to the dictator because they wouldn't want to touch illegal information. Right. That would compromise them. So all they've done, all the NSO group has done, is use their messages account to 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 infect the phone using the Correct. zero click. They, they, they unlock the door. They unlock the door and then let the let the dictator and the walk dictator in. The dictator gets in. Got it. Mm -hmm. And Apple's claim is you you use that account under false pretenses, you violated our terms of service. You can't do that. Correct. Hmm. And if they win, then NSO group, NSO group goes, okay, well, we're no longer charging you a million because we're basically going to burn this exploit if we give it to you, but we'll we'll give you the exploit for $30 million. Yeah. Uh, I am going to guess that one of the reasons uh, Israel and Washington, D.C. are reluctant to do much about NSO group is that... They both use they're using it. They're using, they're using, using the exploits. <laughs> I'm going to guess that they're, you know, the intelligence community <laughs> is saying, well, yeah, they're bad guys, but uh, it sure is useful. Well, that's palantir. And, you know, the reality is right. if, if NSO's got this stuff, there's others that have it too, particularly. No, no, that's the point. That's the point. And they guard these so 100%. But now, your point is correct that some this the, the hacker who came up with this if NSO Group isn't there paying a million dollars, they'll go to the next guy giving them a million dollars. So, so right, other that's people could do it. Yeah, but the, the NSO, NSA Group's or exploits are you know, tightly held. The, yeah, you know the FSB, you know right. the, all these various agencies. You know, if 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 the NS, you know, if the NSO Group doesn't have them, there's they have other exploits, you know, or similar exploits, and maybe even the, you know, maybe even the same exploits. I mean, there's no, there's no guarantee that if there's an exploit there, that only one person has found it. Yeah, but it's a combination of exploits that can be incredibly yeah. useful. So right. you collect a bunch of exploits that maybe themselves don't do much. But when you start combining them, then you can actually get into information that you shouldn't have access to. So that's what NSO Group is really, really good at. They'll buy seemingly useless exploits, and then it becomes a horrible, horrible thing once they have enough that they, they find can ways to chain them together. Precisely. Yeah. It's yeah. like part that's, A, part and they're B exceptionally epoxy. good at that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the NSO group, they're kind of like Ray Donovan. Like, the cops want to arrest him, but they need him to do some stuff every once in a while. It's it's really interesting. Of course, there are people, uh, lots of people who are making money through various bug bounty programs or Pwn to Own, which is a bug bounty program, mm -hmm. or these companies like Zerodium. But if you've got a really good zero-click, zero-day on an iPhone... And you do this for a living, you know there's a place you can go and make the most possible money, and that's NSO Group, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what made the Zimperium story so interesting when it first came out. You had a research company that had an Android exploit that was a non-click exploit. It, you send it, and right. the phone is exploited. This was worth millions, millions upon millions of dollars if they had just sat on it and developed it. But they release it under a bug bounty. They they got nothing 
accept publicity. Now, it was a feel-good story, but the underground was looking at this going, well, that's just stupid. You'll get your 150K bug bounty and... Actually, no, they took $1,337. That was it. And that was it. It was gone. So, and it turned out to be an anti responsibility campaign because people said, don't be Zimperium. Don't be an idiot. Don't sell the $10 million exploit for a thousand. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, what if the, that feel good story was a Harry. So look, Hey guys, I'm giving this one away for free. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then now everybody knows who did it. So you call that guy, Mignola, Mike, what you doing this weekend? And, you know, I come yeah, and work maybe, for us. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? Like that's your credo. This says that you can do it, you know, like the uh, Manigault stacking quarters on top of the backboards at the basketball courts in Brooklyn, and then it became the legend. So now everybody was after him. Prior to that, nobody in the NBA wanted to, you know, draft him because they just, he didn't go to college. Back then, that wasn't a thing, right? So, yeah, maybe that's the story. Maybe now they're looking for the guy who did it and trying to bring him in. I feel like there's so much going on that we don't really know about. Right? It's all behind the scenes. Mysterious. Well, there's a couple of discords for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've always had a little bit of that uh, black hat thing going on, Father Robert. Do you? I dipped a toe or two. Yeah, it's... which is funny because you're a priest. But <laughs> My peeps. <laughs> uh, I guess, you know, there's the angel on your shoulder. There's the devil on your shoulder. Well, and... he dresses in black. <laughs> Probably wears a black hat sometimes. There's, there's a little professionalism. I actually, I had a very long and civil message chain with a group that, uh, that actually exploited a network here in the Vatican. And wow. uh, he let me know how they did it. So, I mean, I, I appreciate it. And that and was important because kind of you're, the, you're the guy Correct. who had to fix it or talk to the guys who had to fix it. Correct. Um, why did they talk to you? Why did they tell you? Would they, did they decide it probably was imprudent to hack the Vatican? Uh, we had met each other a long time ago, and he did not know that that network was, ah. um, was connected to me. Ah. Uh, and so he and respected so just, you. Correct. Oh. Robert, uh, for years you've gone to Black Hat and DEF CON and, and kind of hobnobbed with this community. See, this is why it's worth going look, to conferences. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You just came up yeah, with they, a good no reason. No one's going to discuss this over a Zoom call, but right. they will. Yeah. If you right. give them enough tequila, they'll discuss it in a back room somewhere. Interesting. <laughs> it's also, I think it's important in a way as well, because one thing that a lot of the guys who had the skills they went into is they went into helping out, you know, law enforcement for kidnapping cases and things like that. Um some girls that are here did a really good documentary on trafficking coming from Cambodia, where they're originally from. And it was a group of hackers that sort of helped get the ring shut down. And, uh, you know, it's pretty imp pretty impressive story when you hear it. So I think, you know, we do need some guys that are kind of can go on both sides in order to help yeah. solve this mm -hmm. stuff. And there's a really good one right now about a fellow who is helping this uh, catch the scammers by he works in the center and then when he sees them about to get somebody really bad like he'll secretly call them and be like hey you're talking to this dude right now he's telling you to do this yeah and they're like oh yeah yeah and he goes don't do that this guy's full of crap just hang up or um see if you can merge the call in with you know police at the same time and so he but he works in the call center in calcutta and he's stopping this lady. He, the one that I saw recently, he stopped this lady from transmitting like $150,000 oh. on the Social Security Administration fraud type thing. It's it's crazy. Um, yeah, if I can find a story, I'll send it to you. But yeah, so it's pretty impressive. I'm not up to date on how people become hackers. In my day, the hackers I knew, people like John Draper, Waz, uh, they had a fascination for this stuff. They often started with phone freaking, with the phone system, because at the time, that was the most complicated network in the world. And you would dig through dumpsters out behind network operations centers and try to find manuals. You would learn about this stuff, uh, and you would hack it. And it was fun. It was, a, it was spelunking. It was exploration. Uh, later, uh, as they became coders, they might start doing the same thing with computer operating systems and computer software. Uh, and at the time, it was just kind of fun. Uh, some people... Uh, and again, I'm, I'm familiar with the older generation, the old school uh, hackers, but some people like Kevin Polson um, and Kevin Mitnick um, would sometimes, you know, Mitnick, 
had these interests and skills and then kind of turned him a little bit to the dark side as a way to make money. He was hacking radio station contests, which isn't a huge crime. Um, got caught for it. That's old school. Nowadays, you, maybe you know better, Father Robert, having in communication. How does somebody be, How does somebody get into this? Is it the same kind of process where you're kind of fascinated by computers and you learn to code? And You have just wandered into one of the most toxic threads on Twitter. Just look for OPSEC and everyone has an opinion on what a hacker is and isn't, how you become a hacker, how you get a reputation. Uh, the, the people who can step back and have a toe in this world and yet not be completely paralyzed by what's going on in the world, we see that a hacker is anyone who's curious. If you like breaking things and seeing yeah. why they broke, and then you're a hacker. Uh, you go to DEF CON, you go to Black Hat, you talk to these people who have different skill sets. When, when we do uh, like a security evaluation, you're looking at everything. You're looking at physical security. And for someone, you would look like a, at David Oldham and you'd bring him in. He is the king of physical security. He will teach you everything you've done wrong about securing your perimeter. Are they academically got, trained? Are they amateurs? Are they hobbyists? No, I mean, I wouldn't call them amateurs, but most of these people, they didn't get formal training. There they, is they're no not formally formal trained. training. No. Right. Well, there they is, just but I don't know how it. good it is. I mean, I think, you know, there's things like the certified ethical hacker training. People can learn pen testing, things like that. But I think the people who are... So, and it's also, this is also that, uh, the dark side, you know, there's the... And I think you have right. a little bit of that edge in you where you kind of are in, intrigued by the, the, you know, the kind of stuff that's a little bit beyond the pale. A little bit. Yeah. You, you can train to be blue team. There's great training for blue team, the defenders. Yeah. Red team is, uh, you've got to enjoy something a bit more. You, you've got to really like pushing past what people say is possible. Uh, and yeah, you have to be willing to kind of do things sometimes that maybe aren't ethical. Uh, I, I'm not saying that these are bad people, but it's that curiosity. The curiosity has to drive you to say, well, what happens if I do X, Y, and Z? Right. Um, when normal people wouldn't do X, Y, and Z because that seems is the not good. Difference between a black hat and white hat clear, uh, or do, do many white hats kind of do both? I mean, it seems like it's a very fuzzy line between ethical it's, and yeah. unethical hacking. Yes. When when I was younger, it was a very I thought it was a very clear line. Uh, you know, black hat, if you do anything illegal, if anything that you do could be prosecuted under a law, then it was a black hat. Uh, then we started referring to people as gray hats when they would dip back and forth. But the, by and far, gray hats still didn't do anything that was purely, clearly illegal. Now, you're a security researcher. And the, the laws that you have to cross because you're dealing with the internet, which will go across dozens, if not hundreds of legal jurisdictions where something might be illegal in one place and not illegal in another, uh, you can't really rely on those old distinctions anymore. Yeah. Uh, and also the feds, at least in the U.S., have have made that definition a little bit obsolete by overextending what the Computer Fraud Act can be used for. A lot of people who are mm -hmm. doing things that are, uh, at least on the face of it, are not illegal, are charged with illegality and end up going to jail Correct. even. So it's that definition doesn't work anymore because, the, because federal law has frankly uh, been bent and misused to extend it. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I think... Part of it, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, white hat hackers would do that may technically be illegal, but you have to look at what the intent was. So it's not just a matter of whether it's strictly against the letter of the law, but what what was the intent? Were yes, they but that's the problem, trying to do something nefarious or it, were they trying to understand something to make it better? In this country, uh, the judges and the courts and the juries they don't, they don't understand are that so scared of yeah. technology that they don't they don't able to make that distinction of what was his intent. Right. They're just terrified that he can do it at all makes him a terrorist in effect. Right. Like, you know, a right. prime a prime example, you know, in, in my world, you know, Chris Valasek and Charlie Miller. You know, this they, guys are hacking cars. The the GM. They, yeah, I mean they were they were hacking cars. I mean they they you know I mean they were well known even before the the, the twenty fifteen Jeep hack. But that's the one that really made, you know, brought them into the, the public domain that, you know, a lot of people suddenly became aware of them. And after that, you know, I mean, they, what they did was pr probably illegal, you know, against the, uh, 
you know, relatives is a letter of the law, but they were trying to demonstrate to people that, look, this is a real serious problem. Look what is possible. And, you know, they, they probably could have been prosecuted if somebody wanted to prosecute them. Fortunately, you know, they, you know, the authorities and Chrysler, you know, opted not to do that and instead, you know, to work with them to understand the problem and fix the problem in those vehicles. And now those two guys are actually both, they, they are in charge of cybersecurity at Cruise, uh, GM's uh, autonomous driving division. Yeah. You know, I know exactly the day where my stance on white hat, black hat shifted. Uh, it was September 25th, 2010. Uh, that was the Aaron Schwartz case. So yes. you have mm. a young man Perfect example. who downloads yes. academic documents. These are not top secrets off the JSTOR database at MIT. He didn't hack anything. He plugged into the network. They just didn't want him downloading all those documents and making them public. And the United States goes after him with all its, its fur, uh, fury and ruins his life. And he ends, ends Effectively up killing killed himself. him. He ended up killing himself. Yeah. And here is a guy who had been hugely instrumental in so much of the technology we use. Had he lived, would have been a, a major contributor to, to so many different things. Uh, it's so tragic. And yeah, complete overreach on the part of the prosecution. Um, and and that's because I swear, okay, so if you're an, a, a realtor or, you know, insurance agents, doctors, any type of health people, you have these continuing education credits that you have to take in order to maintain your status. Why we do not do that for politicians, especially when it comes to things like tech and tech security and understanding of how it all works and things like that. Um, I have seen in in these testimonies uh, where, you, you know, watching C-SPAN and they're having a hearing, they ask some of the questions that I swear my mom wouldn't ask. And I'm like, how do you run a state with a yeah. stupid question like that on something just real, real basic, right? And it's super obnoxious. It is super obnoxious and it's sad and it's somewhat depressing. And these guys are in charge of making decisions, right? I mean, we still have... Har by all standards, we still have horrible broadband because these guys don't understand the importance of it. And then when we fall behind in things like security and things like that, because no one's putting an effort towards it, they're not making legislation that, you know, uh, helps kids learn more about the electronics and text. And then they complain about why is all of this manufacturing for all the tech stuff overseas? Because uh, you've set up rules and regulations here that don't allow for that industry to thrive. Yeah. Right? If you put that much effort into tech as you did in the letting big pharma thrive, we'd be in a different position. And I'll, I'm going to put my soapbox back. I know. I agree with you 100, <laughs> uh, 100 percent. Although it seems like a cop out to say dumb, dumb governance, dumb legislators, dumb judges. Uh, yeah, admittedly, they should know more and they should know better. Clearly, they need to. Uh, because if we're going to be a part of the 21st century, they've got to be part of the 21st century. I understand their fear, though. Uh, when you have a group of people uh, who, you know, young people who maybe aren't uh, connected to society in the same way, you know, that the rest of us are, they feel a little bit um, uh, alienated. They have really sophisticated skills that you don't really understand. It feels like these people can get under the hood of everything we do and cause chaos, that they're potentially very threatening and they don't seem to care about making the world a better place or about even, you know, doing the right thing. That's terrifying. And I understand their fear of that. So what do we do to, to fix this? Because we do live in this situation right now, right? And yes. what's happening is... Uh, there are people like the NSO group who are saying, well, we're going to take these disaffected young people with these incredible skills and throw money at them and co-opt their skills to do bad things. We've got to provide an alternative. And Apple's $50,000 bug bounty for something uh, that NSO group will pay $2.5 million for is not enough. We've got to do something about that. What do we do? What do you guys think? What do you Start with you, Robert. What do you think? What do you do? 
Uh, okay, so there's a, a multi-prong approach. First of all, you have to make it. You have to make companies take seri uh, security more seriously. 20 years But they're in, never going to win against these guys. They're, they're never going to win against these guys, but you can at least make it so that the entry is not so dang make it, low. Make it a little harder. Okay. Year yeah. after year, I, I, I hear these speeches from people talking about how we're going to take security first. Nobody does. Security is still a thing that you slap out on the end of it after it's gone through through PR and and all the the, the Q and A people, that's just that's the wrong approach. The, the second thing is, if you want these researchers to be playing for the good guys, you have to pay them a decent salary. I have three former students who work for China right now because they're getting paid. Yeah, and I mean. I, I get you can you can make all sorts of judgments about them, but if we're not willing to pay them, they'll go to some place that will value their skills. I remember, of course, the incredible scene from Good Will Hunting when the NSA comes to this math genius played by uh, Matt Damon and asks him to work for them. And he's got the greatest speech. It's one of the great movie monologues of all time about why he would never consider working for the NSA. Um but what, how do you reach out to a person like that and say, well, but we need you. We need you. For one thing, you don't do what you did to Aaron Schwartz, which was mm -hmm. unconscionable. So that was clearly the wrong path. What do you do? You don't know. I think it's wrong to say, hey, come to work for the NSA, too. What do you do to foster these kinds of people to help them move in the direction where it's helping the world be a better place instead of being a negative? That's what we have I, to I can solve. Give you a, I can give you a, a very clear and concrete example. A few years ago, we had an NSA representative, the head of the NSA came to a DEF CON and we had him, we had all the proof that they were spying on Spot communications, that they had installed Fed. equipment Spot into- the Fed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, well no, we, we actually had, we confronted him with the, with yeah. the evidence that the NSA was inside the, the, the server Jesus. rooms of data centers across the country, Jesus. that they were spying on U.S. citizens. Yes. He bold-faced told us that's not true. You, that just Don't destroyed lie. any yeah. possible Don't relationship lie. that he could have had yeah. with the people in that room. Yeah, that's a very good You point. can't lie to us. No. We know they're more than smart. you do, so don't yeah, lie to us. too smart. You, I think you play on their patriotism. You play on their desire to be... Everybody wants to contribute and be good. You become alienated because you get shut down. But if you, it, you... Don't shut them down. Don't lie to them. Treat them with respect and encourage them to do the right thing. I, I mean, they're going to be bad guys, but you need more good guys. If there's more good guys than bad guys, then you have a well, chance. There's an addendum. One other important segment of it is, too, we really do have to start realizing that the best thing that we'll ever do to fix anything here is start focusing on education and making education a lot easier, right? Yeah. You take somebody like that who's gone through school, right? More than likely, they collected student loans or whatever in order to get there. One of the first things you do just as a goodwill gesture, look, we're just going to wash your student loans for you. We'll go ahead and take care of that. That's one. The other thing is we have got to work really, really hard on dealing with mental illness in this country and the stigmatism that goes with it still to this day, even though we've gotten so much better, right? Um, a lot of these people, their disaffection, some of it is, is a mental illness, but we don't make it easy to because they got teased by everyone in school because they were, you know, say, uh, standoffish or a little on the spectrum or Asperger's, you know, uh, of a functioning you know, person, but because we're taught in school to tease these guys, then that yeah. makes it worse. Yeah. Not like, you know, buddy, you know, we need maybe to celebrate should, them. Right. These celebrate are the heroes exactly. of, uh, of the future. Holla. That's what celebrate about. the neurodiversity. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes. Wesley that Faulkner's been saying that. That's a really good point. Uh, these, this is but where, this is, is where the ideas though. come from. This is where the innovation comes from, not from people like me or think inside the box. This is from people who break and out. We've mentioned several times that we have to appeal to their willingness to do the right thing. Um, the issue is, is that most naive? of the people I know, mo most of the, no, no, it's not naive. Most of the people that I know who are in this world, they are in their mind doing the right thing. Of course, no one does the wrong thing. Because they don't trust yes. the U.S. government. Right. So you want to appeal to them, you right. better prove that you're trustworthy. That's why lying is a bad idea, yes. 
You have to make it something worthy. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's really important. Uh, no evil genius thinks he's evil. <laughs> Some of them do. He, he, in the movies. You know what's, what's funny, too, um, uh, is that I think a lot of people who vocally say in large groups that they don't trust the U.S. government, they don't actually not trust the U.S. government or any government for that matter. They just said it because it's the end thing to say. So what we should do start with stop saying the end things unless you're really like that. And if you're really like that and you have a good reason, hey, that's good. But I do think a lot of people follow repeat things that they don't actually have a true foot in the game. And that causes a really, really loud reverberation chamber. It's challenging because, of course, if you're super smart and you're kind of on the outs because you're a little weird anyway, uh, the default is just say, I don't, you know, I'm not going to trust those guys. I'm going to go my own way no matter what. And it's, uh, I, I understand why that's the default. Um, it may be, you know, just impossible. I just feel like we are, in, we're getting rapidly getting into a crisis situation. Uh, government, you know, governments are solving this by hiring people, training them teaching them. I'm sure Russia's doing this. China's doing this. They have amazing hacking teams. They're not getting these people. I don't know. Do you think they're getting these people from the, you know, the streets or they're actually taking people out of school who seem who have good math skills and teaching them what they need to know? They're creating their own hacker core, right? Well, I mean, you can look for aptitude. There are certain things, certain characteristics right. that you look for when you're looking for someone who will be a good security researcher. Right. Um, and there's also some training. You can give people the basic training. Do you actually know how to do a proper network right. scan? Do you know what, right. uh, how to look for exploits? Do you know how to crash a database or to, to, to test for a crash? You know, so those things you can teach, and then you just see where it develops from there. Right. The, the ones you're looking for will take the information that you've given them and they will start connecting the dots and say, well, I'll do this, then this, then this. They're the kind of people my goal. You, 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 sh you immediately get out, you know, shake out because they're, they don't trust authority, they're anti-authoritarian, they're unruly, they're rebellious. They're all the things you don't want in the military <laughs> or a security service or intelligence service. So they wash out of the program. Those are right. the guys you want. Stop washing out the, the, the rebel rebellious ones. The, diff the neurodiverse ones, the weirdos, because those are the ones you want. You want the ones who will immediately not follow the instructions. Right. That's you, part of the problem. Don't, you don't want the ones that are going to be drones that just right. follow orders. That's and part do of the tell. problem. Yeah. yeah. Right. That anybody who's really good at this already hates you by default because you're the authority. So you're, this is challenging. It's a great conversation. I, I, uh, we, we, we aren't going to answer this today, but I think it's a really... Uh, fascinating conversation. I don't know how we got went down this road. I guess we're talking about the NSO group. Let's talk about the Apple's AR headset plans. That's next. Uh, great panel, Sam Abul Samet. Our car guy is here from Guidehouse Insights. His podcast, Wheel Bearings, available everywhere. Great to see you. What are you driving this week? Uh, I have a new Chevy Tahoe that has a 2022 Tahoe that has GM's new infotainment system that's built on Android Automotive. Oh. You got a great life. New car every week. I love that. <laughs> Father Robert, tell me about the eggs this morning at the Vatican. Oh my gosh! Actually, I did take a picture of the eggs. Uh, they were uh, not eggs. I don't know what they were. But <laughs> were they at least yellow? Some rubber. <laughs> no, they were greenish. The they they make an honest effort to do something that's creative, but most of the time it just turns up like, oh uh, no. Uh, you, you know what's bad? Not even the wildlife around the Korea will eat the eggs. <laughs> they just sniff it and walk away. And do you have a new cat? Because I see a lot of cat pictures on your Twitter feed. I, I don't have any cats. There is a colony of feral cats uh, and that you moved feed them, in. You good I person. I do feed them. Oh, and look at them. Oh. They're kind of cute. Oh. And, How and many actually, of one them? of them has become a lap cat. There are five in, in the group that I call the Vata Cats. <laughs> then there are three in the group that I call the TNG cats. Oh. <laughs> Lisa, I'm going to have to send these to Lisa. Oh, she's going to really. That's Popo. Oh, Popo. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see him. It's not great. named after the Pope. Named oh, after God the Dragon no. Ball Z character. Oh, please. Yes. I hope there's no confusion about that whatsoever. <laughs> oh, the, the papal felines. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also, great to have uh, you, Doc Rock. I always enjoy you. Uh, you're so much fun. 
YouTube.com slash Doc Rock. And you were, uh, you were, were you in special forces? I know you were in combat. No, I was, uh, I was with the unit, but I myself am not badged. Okay. Yes. So I worked in the, in the unit because I was a medic. And at oh, the that's time, right. you were a medic. You, you were yeah. very much into like, um, I guess at the time we were still building, you know, the, the army wasn't as big at the, at the time. So I ended up just working in the unit, but it was cool. How did you do I, with I the authority? With somebody telling oh, you good. where to eat, what to do. Uh, you know, shave. I always, ha I always had it in the back of my head that when I got in charge, I wouldn't act like that. But I was smart enough not to buck the system right away, and then I would go fix things, and then come back, and they'd be like, "Oh, how did this get like? Oh, you told me to do that," and they'd be like, "Oh yeah, okay, I did." And so I just learned to let them feel like they did it. <laughs> so I tricked my way through it. Yeah, let's put it that way. <laughs> well, thank you for your service, however you got through it. We appreciate it. It's great to have you all. Our show today uh, brought to you, as it often is, by a company I am a big fan of called Podium. You know the world has changed. The, the, the pandemic has brought us a whole new world. One of the things I like about it is we're doing a lot of texting, not only to each other, but with businesses. Things like ordering food and then knowing when your food's ready, knowing when to pick up your groceries, uh, knowing, I mean, it's how I make my appointment to get my car serviced or my, my, my teeth serviced by my dentist. If you own a business... You know there aren't enough hours in a day to waste playing phone tag. The list of customers you need to reach isn't getting any shorter, especially when business is good. That's why local businesses everywhere turn to Podium. Podium makes every interaction as easy as sending a text. And you know what? Your customers love it. I don't want to call. I want to text because it takes the friction out of interacting with the business. Everything that makes your business great can get done faster. It's not just a better way to communicate. Podium is a better way to do everything. You can use Podium to ask for reviews. As somebody leaves your store, they get a text saying, hey, was our service good? Leave a review at Google or Yelp or wherever you like to get your reviews. Uh, you can collect payments. Nowadays, it's easy to pay using text messages. And I'll, I'll speak for myself. I would far prefer to do that touchless payments is very easy of course marketing making appointments just staying in touch it's so much easier i get a, a coupon every few weeks from the local ice cream parlor by text and i have to say it works it, it works with podium as a business you won't just free up more time you'll grow your business you'll get more done you'll close deals with customers faster than the competition even has a chance to call them back honestly Every business, you know, it used to be if you were a business, you had to have a, what, an answering machine, then a voicemail, you had to have email, then you had to have a website. Nowadays, you gotta be on text. Text messaging, it's the future. Real business, real ROI. Join more than 100,000 businesses that already use Podium to streamline their customer interactions. You can get started for free right now, podium.com slash twit. It's easy. It's fast. It will transform your business. Bring it right up into the 21st century. Or you can sign up for a paid Podium account and get a free credit card reader. That's a good deal. Some restrictions apply. Podium, P-O-D-I-U-M dot com slash twit. We thank Podium so much for their support of This Week in Tech. Uh, our, our VR, is, is any of you still uh, using VR in any way? shape or form like for fun for recreation uh, uh, i bust it out every once in a while when someone hasn't ever seen vr and it's kind of it lost its luster right yep. yeah um we you know we have a oculus rift the original and we had a htc vive and i i, I when i first used it it was very cool right really neat and it kind of made me look queasy and i just kind of lost interest in one of wear this sweaty old helmet and run into walls and stuff. The kid, 19-year-old Michael, his friends would come over. You know, for a while, they would do a lot of Beat Saber and stuff, and they kind of lost interest. It feels like some of the steam has gone out of the VR revolution. That's not, by the way, sales have not gone down. 
What? Because parents are still buying it for their kids because they think it's cool. <laughs> parents <laughs> like it. Yeah. And what, no, I mean, parents buy stuff for kids because they saw it on TV or they yeah. saw it in their favorite TV show or something like that. And so they think it's the thing. And the kid gets it and the kid's like, yay, this is cool. And it ends up like all of us that bought Osmo Pockets. Yes. Fantastic camera for <laughs> yes. five minutes. Yep. It was dope tech. It was so yep. cool. It, it triggered that nerd thing in you that I need that right now. I swear to you, I used it four times, and it's in the bottom it's of my so backpack. It's so funny. I gave it to O-Doctor. I still O-Doctor. take it. I, I, I gave take mine to O-Doctor. <laughs> same thing. I got an Insta360. I got a Theta. I keep buying these 360-degree cameras. I, you used it more than four times. I, I remember there were there were a few videos. Maybe five times. I Okay, <laughs> I brought my Theta, my Ricoh Theta, which was a pretty good 360 to the Galapagos because I thought, well, this, I want to always have this in, in Machu Picchu. And I haven't looked at those videos and I didn't break it out again yeah. after that. Uh, I did a review of the Mach-E and, uh, and we were using the Insta360. We were using Anthony's personal one. I said, no, no, we should own one. So I bought it. It hasn't been used since. It's just, there's things that, I, and partly because really to use that, you have to, the best results put on the helmet so you can mm -hmm. look around in the Galapagos, right? The, the only time I have I use four 360 VRs, degree cameras. Do you? And do you that use are them? sitting in a box? Sitting in a box. Mm -hmm. yep. the, the, the only only time I use VR is when I go, go into an automaker's design studio and they want to show me something yeah. cool that they're working on. Yeah, I remember you when know. we went to Ford but, many yeah. years ago, five six years ago. Uh, we went to the studio and there and that this was early days. They were using it. Um, but and yet I think there's still the impression this is the next big thing. Apple. Uh, mm. has been saying AR, AR, AR for a long time. Um, Ming-Chi Kuo, who is, of course, the supply chain analyst who has the best connections in Asia, um, has put out a research note saying Apple's going to release its first... Now, he says AR. I'm going to say mixed reality headset fourth quarter of next year, so a year from now. He knows a lot about it. He says it'll have two processors, the same level of computing power as their M1, and then one lower end chip to handle input from sensors. The headset, so this is the interesting thing. This first one from Apple is like a VR helmet. It's not glass, it's not spectacles. You don't see through it, but it has six to eight, he says, optical modules, in other words, cameras, that will simultaneously provide continuous video see-through AR services. So you'll be able to walk around, basically watching TV, of your life, <laughs> you won't you won't see the real world. You'll see it through these lenses. Uh, it has this. The, he said the headset would have two 4K. He said, I don't know if I can believe this. Micro OLED displays from Sony. Now that would be very very much state of the art next year. Would also, uh, at least based on the cost of micro LED now, be a fairly expensive thing. Although they're small. Um, is this Apple throwing? spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks? They seem to think... Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Okay, you think about one thing that Apple has always been very good at, and it's things for accessibility. Okay, so as you become low vision, imagine instead of thicker, thicker glasses, you could wear something like this that would help you with your ah. vision. You still got see-through reality, right? But you have some heads-up display to steal uh, Sam's industry, Mixed in with your reality. Think of what we see in an Apache or what we see in, you know, some of the Abrams tanks and things like that where you're wearing an, uh, an Oculus, no no pun intended, <laughs> but to, to give you some assistance, right? You're adding information, not just taking over your reality. So I can see something like that coming into play. And this is going to start big and eventually get watered down back into the glasses that everybody's been wanting. But when we were all being glass holes back, you know, a few years back, that was the thought. And, you know, Apple likes to take the thought and turn it into function. And uh, I mean, later, look, so if you could make these it. things look like spectacles, even if they're Clark Kent, big, thick black spectacles, that would be good. I don't think we have the technology. I think that's the only no, thing. No, not yet. So I think that's you're going to start out with a headset or an MR headset. I love your new... I hope you get the 
pat, uh, write that down. It makes reality. Oh, I think it's a com <laughs> it's commonly used actually. Right. Yeah. So being able to take something like that and then slowly work it down to where we can get to, you know, be spectacled use, that would be dope. But That's I do the believe rumor. That's that the starting rumor. out, starting out with something that will work from an accessibility standpoint, or even maybe some research type standpoint. Uh, those would be fantastic. The you rumor know. was that they were going to do these kind of mixed reality, v, basically a VR headset with pass-through next year. And then the year after, which seems a very aggressive timeline, they would have these spectacle-like devices that are glass with a heads-up display. That I don't think sense. we're even Unless close it's to true that. AR, I don't want it. Uh, I, I agree. I don't care how high resolution your screens are. I don't want to watch if my life cutting on off TV. my peripheral vision. Yeah, yeah. It just—it's a screen. Well, it's a screen. I don't want a screen actually, three inches from my face. It could have better. So what if peripheral it can enhance vision? your peripheral vision? Yeah, yeah it could because be better. Those sensors are going to maybe help you spread it out a little bit. Also, it would be really cool to, as a low vis person, right? I, uh, Siri, can you read that sign over there for me? And it knows which one you're looking at because it's you know looking at your. Well, office. there's all. I mean, I can think of a lot of use cases. Yeah, I'm in Russia. I can't read Cyrillic. But by VR glasses, everything's in English because it's translating yeah. like Google yeah. Lens as we go. Those, there's lots of credible uses for it. I just don't know. Do you want to, mm. The other thing, yeah. and, and there's really a, a societal problem with anything with cameras on it. Uh, look how people got beat up for wearing Google Glass. I mean, I don't think that that's... <laughs> That's gonna go away. If I'm walking around with something that is obviously recording that the, you, that was the um, the comic books, the back of the comic books when we were the X-ray specs. The X -ray yeah. specs. <laughs> I bought them, by the way. I bought them. How'd didn't, that work out for you, Leo? Work. You can't see through dresses. I tried. Did did, did you also get the sea monkeys, Leo? You I had did. to get the sea monkeys. I love that. I did stuff. get the sea monkeys. I got the sea monkeys. I'm trying to remember this X-ray specs. They they just distorted stuff. It's like you were squinting. But and so you might imagine that you were seeing somebody <laughs> naked. The other one that I got from the back of the comic books back then was the garlic gum. Which oh is the God! Best. Oh like yes, someone, yes. And what happened was everybody knew what it was after a while. So we would take the Wrigley's packet, remake it all nice so it's nice and perfect, mm -hmm. and it would either be the garlic gum or the one with the mousetrap thing that would yeah. snap Chup. your finger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I backfired you because I, I, you were bad. Man. Oh, absolutely. Abs anything. I was the self-addressed stamped envelope king of my neighborhood. <laughs> if you read somewhere, send us, you know, six box top in the self-addressed stamped oh, envelope, and those. you get the super golden Chris uh, LP to play that stupid yep. song. Yep, that was me. <laughs> Kellogg still owes back. me a Mr. I, Potato I got, Head. I sent in twenty <laughs> Kellogg's box tops. Never got my Mr. <laughs> Potato Head. <laughs> I got the gum that turned your mouth blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to yes. a yeah. gift. I only had to send three ninety nine to <laughs> Walla Walla, Washington, and there you go. In a self addressed stamped envelope, I'm good to go. <laughs> so, what is it about it. Walla Walla, Washington, that makes it so popular for those kinds of businesses? I miss, I miss hearing the name Walla Walla, Washington. You used to so hear that, all that the time. in Pueblo, Colorado. Pueblo, the US Colorado. PTO. And who Just knows? The free who knows the Chicago zip code for the Spiegel catalog? I bet everybody does. That's. Maybe that's just my age, but that's built oh, God, <laughs> I remember the Spiegel catalog. Right? Spiegel and Montgomery Ward catalog. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Chicago, Illinois. Actually, maybe it isn't. It was oh. six oh six oh nine. Six six oh yeah, it was it had two sixes. Six oh six oh nine. Oh my goodness. By the way, I just wanna uh, this is the VR I want. This is the view I want. This is Father Robert's view oh. at, at the Vatican. <laughs> With his A10 Mini, what are you switching the the Pope's stream I'm here? I'm switching. I'm wow. switching. I got a little uh, little PTZ camera and then a wide camera for the the wide shot. Uh, yeah, that's just an A10 Mini Pro, and it was doing all the streaming for me. See, that's kind of a nice little setup. What a pretty place to be, too. Look how pretty that is. It's a nice place to do live events. What, although what they, chapel is this? What is this? This is uh, Saint Ignatius, San Ignacio. And you're because you're a you're a Jesuit, so this is your home church, I think, right? Right. Well, one of them. Yeah. One of them. Uh, yeah. So you know, I I needed a, a setup that was light because everything was it was raining. It had to be able to be uh, put into one pelican case. Uh, they're getting used to me. They all the churches at first wanted me to use their wireless, and I'm like, we're not. No, we're not broadcasting over wireless. <laughs> oh. So now they <laughs> yeah, finally know. Churches now. 
Ethernet. We're doing Ethernet in every church. Oh, here he Fiber comes again. There's a guy with an Ethernet. Oh, boy. <laughs> exactly. Oh, boy. We got to roll the Ethernet. <laughs> so, see, this, if, so I think that's one use for AR, VR, mixed reality is I could be somewhere else. Correct. That would be cool. I don't want to wear it walking down the street in Petaluma. I know I'd get beat up. I know I would. Yeah. <laughs> They'd sneak up it's behind It's a presentation me. device. It's yeah. not, it's not, Meta wants it to be a productivity device. It's not a productivity device. It's entertainment slash presentation. Yeah, and to experience it, stuff that you couldn't. I mean, I would love to see the Sistine Chapel, uh, and someday I will, and you're going to be my guide. But until then... Uh, I think it's a pretty cool way to experience it, right? It's not everybody can actually e even get there. Even as a presentation device, though, I think it's still of dubious benefit. I mean, last year, uh, last summer of 2020, during the height of the pandemic, there was an automaker that was making a big announcement, and they were doing this presentation through VR, and they actually sent out um, Oculus Quest or some, I, I don't know, uh, Quest. The, Some the Oculus headset. Right? Yeah, they the Quest it was a, too. It was a standalone yeah, 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 one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. I think it was the original Quest. Quest. Okay. Not the not or whatever the whatever their first standalone one was before the Quest Two. Um, anyway, they sent these out to to people. They sent out I don't know how many hundred of these things, and so I had to put it on, and you know watch the presentation in this headset. And the problem is, you know, when I'm watching a presentation, one of the things I like to do is take some notes. Right. And you can't take notes, you know, while, while I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know about you, but I can't take notes while I'm sitting there with a headset on and I can't see my notebook. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. And, you know, there was, it, it added nothing to the presentation compared to just watching it in a Zoom window. Except, mm -hmm. I mean, there was one thing that was kind of cool. Um, they had uh, a, a driving part of it uh, where, you know, the car went out and was driving around uh, the city and they had a 360 camera set up in the passenger seat. So I could sit there and I could spin around in my chair and look around, you know, as if I was sitting in the passenger seat, looking around and looking down at the infotainment system and stuff like that. That was the one part that was kind of neat. But even that, after a few minutes, it's tiring. Was, it's exhausting. it was tiring and, and yeah. making starting to make me a little nauseous. Yeah. So did, did you, you tilt know, your seat to, to, you know, sort of duplicate the G forces? As I did. Was you know, and I, I have, you know, I have one of those gaming chairs that looks like a, a high performance seat in my office. And, there oh, you go. Nice. <laughs> Actually, I want to talk about, so app, so this is AR. I think app, I think you said this, Dr. Rock, Doc Rock. I think you said this, which is this is Apple needs something to follow up the iPhone, so they're gonna they're gonna throw stuff against the wall until something sticks, and they've got enough money, so they're doing health, and I think they're gonna do all sorts of stuff with health with the Apple Watch. They're doing augmented reality, and maybe these will overlap. Uh, AirPods might end up being an augmented reality device as well, and they're gonna end up doing a car. So let's take a break. When we come back because we've got the car guy here. Let's talk about Project Titan. It's back in the news, and this is the, I think this is the third leg of the of the of the three-legged stool that Apple's trying to find the next thing. I'm not sure which is going to succeed. I'm curious what you all think as we continue this week in tech. Sam Abul Samad, principal researcher at uh, Guidehouse Insights, Father Robert Balasser, the digital Jesuit, digitaljesuit.com, and uh, of course Doc Rock from YouTube of YouTube fame. Actually, before we take a break, I've got a, sh a little mini movie to show you. We had a great week this week on Twit Watch. The top 10 <laughs> most common passwords still in 2021. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, Lord. And when it comes to animal <laughs> themes, dolphin. So, Leo, it looks like monkey is out. <laughs> dolphin has replaced monkey. Previously on Twit. This week in Google. We've got Sam Lesson. You may remember last week we were talking about Sam's plan with his venture capital firm to invest in creators. There are great creators out there that can use the capital. And then there's a whole bunch of missing things from models to, you know, liquidity options, whatever that don't exist yet that we think will come to exist. But we think the way you do that is by starting to just go um, and like help build the ecosystem around it over time. 
all about Android. Wear OS had a surge in the last quarter, uh, thanks to the Galaxy Watch 4, uh, Samsung's latest what, wearable that came out a few months ago. Wear OS is up to 17% of smartwatch shipments in Q3. This is up from only 4% of the previous quarter. Security Now. The well-known internet domain registrar and more recently cloud hosting provider GoDaddy said that a hacker gained access to the personal information of more than 1.2 million customers. The last thing you want in a domain registrar is excitement. Twit. Things are rather excited over at GoDaddy right now. No thank you. <laughs> I hope you watched and, uh, and if you didn't, well, we got a great week ahead with lots of fun stuff. By the way, if you're not a member of Club Twit, you can see all this stuff ad-free, which makes it a lot more uh, enjoyable, I think. $7 a month gets you ad-free versions of all of our shows. You won't hear me haranguing you. You'll also get uh, access to our wonderful Discord, uh, which has channels for all kinds of topics. You know, we're doing that Twit cruise in July, and I think, I, I think we're going to use the Discord service as a way to keep in touch with all the people on the cruise. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Stacy had her first book group in there. They're voting now on what the next book will be. We've got Mary Jo Foley coming up with an Ask Me Anything. There's lots of great events going on in the Discord. And, of course, the Twit Plus feed gives you uh, feeds of all of those events, plus lots of other stuff that didn't make it to the podcast feed. All of that, 7 bucks a month, twit.tv slash club twit. Thank you in advance. Your support really makes a big difference. Our show today brought to you by Stamps.com. I know this is it, the holiday season, right? You got all sorts of stuff you're mailing. Problem is, so does everybody else. Do you want to get in line at the post office, find a place to park, holding your packages? Uh, why would you do that when you can use stamps.com? I mean, I love my postal folks, and I love saying hi to them, but I don't need to. I don't need to buy stamps. I don't need to mail packages at the post office. I can do everything I would do at the post office from my desk with stamps.com. Skip that trip. Dodge the hack, hectic holiday traffic, save time, and you'll save money with Stamps.com. And now here's some really good news. Not only do you get the full services of the United States Postal Service, you get UPS, United Parcel Service, as well with Stamps.com. Now you can compare rates, print labels, access exclusive discounts on both services all year long. Stamps.com has been a happy partner of this show now since 2012. We've been using them for even longer. I'm a big fan. Whether, you, uh, whether you're selling online, you know, if you're an Etsy or an eBay or Amazon seller, the professionalism stamps.com gives you is great. Your recipients get the text message saying the package is on the way, the package looks nice, your logo's printed right on it. You could print your logo, your return address, your, your sender's, uh, your recipient's address all onto an envelope automatically your computer your printer and stamps.com is all you need you'll even get discounts you can't get at the post office 40 percent up to 40 percent off united states postal service rates up to 76 percent off ups rates now that's fantastic and and never do you have to guess how much postage you're going to get a great usb scale so you'll always know exactly how much postage to put on spend not a penny more than you have to Going to the post office instead of using stamps.com is like taking the stairs instead of the elevator. If you're just going up a couple of floors, all right, take the stairs. But if you walk up 30 flights a day, you need a break. You need stamps.com. If you, if you do a little bit of shipping in your life, in your business, especially now during the holiday season, stamps.com is a lifesaver. In fact, you're going to like it so much, you're going to wonder why you didn't start sooner. Go right now to stamps.com to save time and money this holiday season. And I would suggest you take advantage of our special offer. This is the best offer ever. Go to stamps.com, click the, you know, heard us on a podcast button, type in the offer code TWIT for twit. Uh, you'll get a special offer with a four-week trial of stamps.com. You get a bunch of free postage you can use over a few months period of time. You get a digital scale, that scale I mentioned, no long-term commitments, no contracts, just a great way to try Stamps.com. What an offer this is. Stamps.com, click the top of the page, enter the code TWIT, transform your life forever. You will be very glad you did this with Stamps.com. 
So I'm sure, Sam, you're following Project Titan. It's constantly in the news, which is interesting. I thought it was going to go to go away. Apple's car project, it seems to be changing a little bit. They've assigned uh, Kevin Lynch now to run it, which is, I think, a sign. He's the guy who put Apple Watch on the map. And uh, he's the guy that you assign to a new product if when you're when you're getting ready to launch it to make sure it launches with a bang. Uh, they have they've been hiring people right and left from all sorts of companies, including Tesla. They did just lose their battery guy, uh, but uh, is Project Titan uh, on the high high burner right now? Is that what you think? It certainly seems to be getting a little more attention again. I mean, I wrote my first article about the Apple car back in February 2015. Um, and I wrote a whole series of, of articles back in 2015 about this and more or less stopped after that because there wasn't much else to say. And frankly, most of what I wrote back then, you know, looking back over it again, I, I, I put a link in the, uh, in the rundown to, uh, to my blog where I wrote this stuff, is still true today. You know, I think I, I have a very hard time believing that Apple is going to get into the business of building and selling cars to consumers. Um, you know, it is it is and always has been a very low margin business, um, with a few exceptions. You know, there are a few companies that have managed to become very high, you know to maintain very high margins in the business. Company brands like Porsche and Ferrari, but they're also relatively low volume manufacturers. You know compared to a Toyota or Volkswagen. And it just doesn't seem like the kind of business that um, that Apple would want to get into. Uh, you know, it's just not not what Tim Cook likes to pursue. Um, the, you know, if they were to do this, you know, a, a read, you know the latest thing that um, Mark Gurman published, which I thought, you know, to me seemed rather flawed in its thinking, um, you know, was that they were going to build an autonomous vehicle with no no steering wheel no pedals and you know frankly that is not while you i think you know we will have vehicles on the road that match that description in 2025 which is the timeline that german gave those vehicles are going to be very limited in the where they can operate and the conditions they can operate in they'll be they're going to be They'll be well. There'll be trucks, there'll be robo taxis, robo -taxis. delivery vehicles, yeah. and they will operate in very specific operating. Well, domains. like Waymo, right now you can't use it yeah. in downtown San Francisco. You can only use it in the very much simpler exactly. avenues part of San Francisco. Yeah, and you know that that domain is that because level four and level five is so hard to do that they're just not there. It is. It, it's extremely difficult to do. Um, you know, the world is a very difficult place, and you know. For all of our flaws as human beings, we are shockingly good at doing perception of the world around us in ways that computers simply cannot handle with the same, with anywhere near the same degree of reliability. AI is not nearly good enough, not nearly reliable enough to, to do safety critical operations like this. Yeah, it's fine for doing facial recognition or you know a lot of other applications it's used for, but for something where the consequences of making a mistake mean that people die. That's not good. It's it's not anywhere <laughs> close to yeah. being ready for that. Yeah. And it probably won't be for a long, long <laughs> yeah. time. Well, and you there's know, and, also the issue of humans uh, who are yeah. unpredictable. And if you're a, a software trying to understand what's going on, it's kind of challenging to yeah. understand what a and, and that's to. that that actually has turned out to be one of the toughest parts of this you know you can sort of break down the the autonomous driving problem into four main steps perception you know making sense of the world around you what are the things what are you know identifying all the stuff around you and where it is in physical space around you then prediction predicting what all those other road users are going to do in the next three to five seconds then Path planning, figuring out what is your path you're going to take through that environment, and then control, ex actually executing the the brakes and the steering and 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 the acceleration to make that path happen. Well, it turns out that perception is really hard, but pr prediction is even harder. Understanding what other road users are going to do in the next three to five seconds is really really hard, and very you know it's. That's something that AI and and software is still really struggling with, um, and so you know I think 
if Apple were to go down this path, the the way they're likely to do it is as a robo taxi model, as a service model. I don't think you'll ever be, or at least not for a very long time, be able to go and buy an Apple car. But um, golly, if you look at how but, much money Uber is lo lo losing as a rideshare, right, billions but there's a year, there's you a, think there's Apple an important, could make money at this? Well, there's an important difference here. Apple is a company that goes after premium customers, so premium they can charge segments. More. Yeah. Right. So, you know, they are not going to offer the kind of cheap Uber and Lyft rides that we became used to pre-pandemic. Um, you know, even now, Apple or Uber and Lyft, they have raised their prices dramatically they over the last to. several they're years. They're still losing money. And they're still losing money. Apple, you know, the Apple customers, you know, and the thing is doing the robo taxi model, Apple can be very selective about where it operates. It doesn't have to be everywhere. You know, it can be so in places just like Beverly San Francisco Hills. Or and it's just and Beverly Hills stars. and Miami, you know, South Beach and, <laughs> yeah. you know, Manhattan. It's not a, you know, so, a billion-dollar so, business, though. I hate to say it. That's a lot of money to spend for a very narrow no, business. No, it's, it's going to be really tough to, to get the kind of revenues that, that Apple likes from this kind of business. I mean, that, do you think Mark Gurman got it wrong? Like I mean, he's, qu I do. he's quoting uh, anonymous sources. But he says even within the uh, Project Titan team, there's dispute over whether they'd be able to do it in that very advanced uh, timeline, 2025. But at the I, same time, he also says, and I think this is public record, the hires, they just hired uh, Tesla's former self-driving software director, C.J. Moore, a climate system expert from Volvo, a manager from Daimler, battery engineers from Karma, sensor engineer from GM's Cruise, automotive safety. I mean, they're hired, they're on a yeah, tear. But but, but they've been doing that for the last seven years. They've hired a lot of people you know, with similar credentials over the last seven years. And a lot of those people are no longer there. They have a lot of them have left. They, you know, so they, they're, they're yeah, there almost as fast like four people years. like Doug Field leaving almost as fast as they're yeah. hiring. People are leaving. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's part of why they have to keep hiring because people keep leaving. Yeah. They get frustrated that, you know, they can't do they can't they can't achieve the goal that they Lynch want. Lynch is the fifth person to take charge in seven years. Yeah. I think the journalists and the public at large are thinking of this possibly completely wrong. And if I'm right, I want to come back and moonwalk all over the studio. Let's record this and, right now. <laughs> Doc Rock if is I, about if to If I'm wrong, I'll stamp. admit it. I'll admit it that I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit that I'm wrong. I think that Apple's play into the industry is going to be more like Texas Instruments or more like uh, Faruja, if you know about uh, digital cinema Forcia? processing. Oh, you know, okay. things like that. <laughs> no, no, I meant, I meant like it's uh, a... It was basically signal processing in your DVD players and all your Sony, mm -hmm. you know, TV it's good cameras and equipment. For Fruja, yes, right, right. They're fantastic. So, if you take the the M1 and its computational skills, its uh, neural engines, all of that stuff. All right, you rebranded. I don't know, Car One, C One, Auto One, whatever, and you become the digital signal processing in these cars. So Sam, I know you're familiar with D9 and the other chips that people used to put in their cars to make them faster. Basically, it was recalculating, recalculating fuel mixtures and shift lines and things like that. Imagine taking the tech that we have in an iPhone, an iPad, an M1-based processor, and allowing your car to make process decisions at a scale unheard of. OK, the other thing that Apple is really, really good with is sensors. So taking the six Sony cameras, Sony uh, visual sensors that would have been in these goggles or something and put them in a car, you're taking some of the uh, safety things that you can add, not make it necessarily autonomous, make vehicles safer, make vehicles more fuel efficient because you're making more educated decisions on fuel curves, making creature comfort better so that people can absorb things and, and uh, you know, pick up knowledge, order food, order, you know, things, check on their kids, all of the above stuff that we now do semi with the phone. If you become a processor or something that lives in these cars, you generate a billion dollar industry without having to build the whole car. You let everybody else build it, no, you become Firestone. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Doc. Um, you know, I think that Apple, if they wanted to, 
could be a really important automotive supplier because they do have a lot of really key strengths. They, you know, their processing capability, uh, you know, making very high powered, very power efficient processors, which is key, especially when you're talking about electric vehicles. You know, that you need to have high performance per it watt. Does, you don't want to be drawing too much power for your autonomous system. It does system, solve right? a problem Apple has. They have developed. They're sitting on a gold mine with this Apple Silicon. They don't want to give it to any other manufacturer of PCs. They want to make it exclusive to Macs. That's going to sell Macs. But they would like, I bet you anything, they would like to do something with this gold mine besides build Macintoshes. So that's The question is, so though, would, would Apple want to sell chips to some other automaker, you know, and would where people buy they're them? not in control of it? Yeah. And would that people so I, well, I think, I think, I think if they offered it feels them. like it, yeah. I, th I think I think if Apple offered to sell the chips, I think that there's a lot of automakers that would, would want to buy yeah. Apple Silicon. You know, Nvidia's I mean, doing I mean, there's well a, there's that a, way, right? Nvidia's yeah, Nvidia is doing really well. Yeah. Qualcomm is is picking up a whole bunch of business. NXP, TI, you know, are these all um, even ARM even Intel and Mobileye. Hmm? Are mostly um, ARM they, architecture. They it's it's a it's a mix of a bunch of different things. I mean, just as you know, they're. You know, App, Apple silicon chips are not pure ARM. You know, no, there's, there's ARM. A lot of they notes. all they all yeah. use ARM CPU cores, right. but they all have neural engines. They right. all have GPUs um, and you know tensor chips. Um, so there's there's a, a wide or there's a wide variety of stuff that goes but, into these but SOCs. Father Robert, you're saying this isn't in Apple's DNA. They've never yeah. done anything they, that's yeah. not public sold to the public before. The last time they did this was pre-Jobs. It was under Scully when they started allowing third parties to manufacture Apple clones. I don't see them doing this with a core technology like the M1. I see this more as this is Apple's IBM play. They're looking at a new industry and they're saying, you know what? We can set ourselves up with so much IP that people will have to come to us to license uh, any new self-driving technology. That's they don't want to sell their silicon. Yeah. That's yep, a really that interesting too. idea. A, I'll a, take a, that. A patent portfolio. That's very yep. interesting. Mm -hmm. That's still better than thinking they're going to build a whole car. I just don't see them building yeah. a whole car. I'll I'll Ooh, take what yeah. Father Robert says. Or even me, like even for them giving chips, I don't mean sell them the chips with their somebody else is going to program and have their hands in it and mess it up. If Apple's going to give you a chip, they're going to do everything in house. They're going to build it per your spec, and then maybe give it to you. They're not going to let you play with it and screw it up, and then make them look bad. Yeah. So, yeah. So I agree with... with Patent portfolio, oh, yeah. that's interesting. And that's, by the way, how Qualcomm, not just IBM, but Qualcomm makes most yeah. of its money. So uh, that's a very interesting idea. That's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Once, once you have yeah. an IP, you milk it for generations. Yeah. Uh, so the, the the only the only challenge with that, you know, and I agree, I think that that would be a, an interesting approach for Apple to take. You know, there's already a lot of competition for all of those pieces of that puzzle. Um, and, you know, does Apple actually have enough that's unique right. that others have to license? Um, They'd have you know, one Because as I said, you've got a bunch of chip rip. makers. There's, there's 70 different it LiDAR companies out there. chip IP, but maybe yeah. software, uh, self-driving software? I, I, but I would believe there's brand wreck too, though, right? So, for instance, when you're going to go look for this new car, right? We're four years down the line, yeah. And you want to buy the car, Apple and inside. You find out it has Apple M1 chips inside, inside or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the brand wreck just leveled up that car. Yeah. It was like, um, is that enough for Apple? We, though? Maybe not, but it would help the manufacturers, right? Because remember, I remember wanting to grow up, get my own car that had Nakamichi sound. Because I, yo, know, the, the ghetto GM sound was just whack, and I wanted Nakamichi sound, and then it turned you out didn't later want a on we grew up. <laughs> Blah Punk too. There's another one. You know what I'm saying? But those were how you did it, right? Or it came with the Corinthian lever. Remember the Chrysler Cordova, <laughs> the first car with the Corinthian leather. I think they leather? invented Corinthian like, leather, actually. Yeah, they did. Yeah, Somebody they went did. in the Bible. It was a marketing saying, term. Oh. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there was the Chrysler Cordova with yes, um, what's yes. his name? Fantasy Island. Ricardo yes. Matoba. Ricardo, 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 Ricardo Matoba. You want to get the Chrysler Corinthian with the Corinthian leather? leather. <laughs> Wait, yeah, yeah. was it the Chrysler that had that that wooden accent around the car? Yes, it was like that's a wooden the one. Belt. It's called the <laughs> Cordova. Yeah, yeah. Sam Cordova. knows because he got Cordova. one. He got one in the garage. No, I never had a Cordova. But and I think they would play. <laughs> Oh my God! I just that, know as a as that, a half Latino, every Latino man in the neighborhood wanted a Cordova because it was a car with a good Latino <laughs> name. <laughs> yes. But you know, I mean, just I just in, just in chips, 
you know, there, there's a, a huge market for automotive chips. Uh, you know, Qualcomm had their investor day last week or the week before. And, you know, they have for their new Snapdragon ride platform, which is their chips for um, autonomous vehicles and, and ADAS driver assist. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy. That's the guy right there, bro. <laughs> he even got it in brown. Oh God! Luxury of seats. This is not Corinthian leather. Corinthian leather. Corinthian. Yet it is on the highway where Cordoba best answers my. Where's tattoo? <laughs> that, and that was an awful <laughs> the car. Cordoba, the car. Was it? It looks oh, like an awful it was, car. It was. It was an awful like car. Looks like a boat. Going and, down and the highway. It was, all you saw was Mac Daddies and Angel Flights and those collars that came out to your shoulders. <laughs> Dude, that's filmed in Hawaii right there. That is Hanama Bay. I have great confidence. Oh, I love Hanama Bay. Which that car weighed about 10 no tons, price. by the way. <laughs> Bro, who dug this up? You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Cordoba, Cordoba. You know, Qual Qualcomm has a $13 billion backlog of orders for their Snapdragon ride platform wow. for driver assist. Is that because of the uh, chip shortage or because they No, really... that's just you know they they've they've the put together what appears to be a really good silicon platform for yeah. these driver assist and so it's comp and, it's, and a, it's a crowded and, market. And they've got a lot of orders. I just remember Apple's in this situation. They had the single most successful product of all time probably. Certainly most successful consumer electronic product with the iPhone. And and you know, they've got to appease the stock market who's saying, well, what have you done for me lately? They need the next big thing. They're sitting on hundreds of billions of dollars of cash. It's perfectly reasonable for they've got so many chips, they can put them on black and red and pass. They don't care because and so they're going to do AR. They're going to do cars. They're going to do health. They may all flop. Uh but it makes they got to do something, and they got enough money to try all three. I I agree. I, agree. I think the long shot, the longest shot, is the car. Uh, but but I, I gauge I gauge the reward for success. AR VR, there you can make that into a consumer product. If it's successful, you you have huge. It's the market. closest thing to the iPhone, right? It's like precisely. The next iPhone. But the car, it's a natural extension. Even if right. the car was successful, they would never get the margins they would want. I mean, they're, they're, people yep. compare it to to Tesla, but remember Tesla. Last year, they made $1.6 billion of in, in incentives, only $721 million on actually selling cars. Right. Apple's not going to repeat that. So they don't want to sell a car. A car is going to be such a millstone around their neck they, come, if come they, profit time. Yeah, if they do anything, they want a service. They want mobility exactly. as a service. And even yeah. that is going to be a stretch, whether that's going to be enough to, you know, to tip the scales for what they want out of a business. They also, though, uh, are looking strategically. And I think this is one of the things that's both challenging but something that Apple embraces, which is, you know, skate where the puck is going. It's just aiming five years in the future. What's the world going like, to look like? It's going to look like EVs, right? In fact, didn't Dodge just say they're phasing out the Challenger yep. and the Charger? The end of 2023, the Hellcat is dead. Wow. I mean, that's be same thing, right? It's going to be EVs. Uh, it's going to be... What's the future of personal car ownership, Ian? I was just getting ready to ask you that question. I believe that it's going to take us longer, but having lived in Japan and Korea and spent lengthy time in China, personal mobility is massive and it is growing right now, even just in bikes. And I think the last time I was on, Sam, we, somebody brought up this really wicked oh, scooter. Oh, e-bikes are hot right now. Micromobility. Right. So, yeah, I believe micro, my, whatever he just said, is the move. <laughs> <laughs> and and because of Apple styling, well, just look again, brand wreck, they could just do fantastic with an Apple, like something, you know, type Segway ish scooter. An, an Apple, an Apple e scooter red. that, yeah, that can, when you, when you get off it, you know, that it's autonomous, it can drive itself to, you know, ride itself to a charging. And look dock how and, bad and traffic is in. everywhere. I mean, high, on, on, uh, H1. Is, oh, God. It's it's a nightmare, it, and yes. this is Hawaii. Uh, yes. There's nowhere you can go where they don't say, "Oh yeah, we have the worst traffic in the country." It's, it's, the, a, it's the largest it's, parking lot in the it's paradise. Horrible. Yeah, I mean, where, the only thing good where, about us is that the weather's not bad, yeah, so at least you're not freezing to death. Yeah, right. Where, where, wherever we can. What we need to do is move towards getting people out of cars and getting them either into something with a smaller footprint, like micromobility, whether that's bikes or scooters or you know rickshaws or something like that, or 
into mass transit. Right. You know, and actually, you know, it's a combination of all of these things. It needs to be an ecosystem, a mobility ecosystem. But maybe on-demand self-driving vehicles would solve some of this problem. I don't think you're going to – I wish. I don't know. I think it's too late. I wish we'd have trains for the long distance. So and we'd the have only way to do on-demand like that, Leo, would be uh, micro rail. Because I because what we talked about, about machines still having a hard time with decision. and No, but if everything's things. on demand, you know, Alex Lindsay said oh, on Mac Break Weekly, he wants a living room with a bed that just comes to his door. He gets in and wakes up in L.A. It's not, and that, I mean, that's what the original promise of rail travel was. Yeah. But I think we can give up on that now. We're not going to have that high speed. What is the current Californians trying to build a high speed rail? Between San Francisco and L.A. It, it's, it's so like, sad, though, because if you've ever ridden the Shinkansen, you know oh, that dope it's is dope. It's, it's amazing. The I ever. love the trains over here. Yeah. The trains in Italy oh, are my incredible. Goodness. And the Shinkansen, the seat. Okay, if you, I'm a green car guy because I'm bigger. I don't even try to use the regular car, so I always use green car. Those seats are better but than mini airplane first class. Don't you think in the U.S. that train's left the station? It's it's over. I mean, I, yeah, I know it, it's it. It's I mean, over maybe, because it'll take us 30 years to do it. If we're going to do it, we have expensive. to do it now. And right now we're too, we can afford it, but we're too divided politically to do it. The other thing is, um, our, or now my brain just went dumb. What do you call it when you take land back for better use? Um, Eminent uh, domain. Oh Eminent yeah. domain. Yeah, oh, you're talking about all kind of fights just because of the political divide. Right. So I think we could have fixed it, but right now we're too busy on just, you know, Sony versus PlayStation and everything that comes up. It's always a fight. It's Mac PC. So we're never going to get enough people to agree on it. But I believe that if we did trips where we took people to go ride it for a, a couple of days and see what it's really like and how... How's that when like? I was in How's that light rail project going in Hawaii right now? We come, it, it's it's doing better. Um, we're getting closer. Uh, we, we were a lot of money out because of idiot mistakes and because whenever you let construction people do the stuff in any city, and I don't know why Hawaii got the bad rap for it, but construction stuff has always been slightly riddled with a little bit of, you know, but do you think, uh, underpinning. But do you think that's actually so, uh, ever going to be, I mean... Oh yeah, it's almost done. I can I can see parts of it out the window, so it's good. But we just spent a lot of money because there was people trying to cheat. Yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah. part that's crazy. But the cars are in. The first set of stuff. Oh, is I'm in. glad they to hear some, that. That's great. They did some virgin rides last year. Uh, you know, pandemic slowed things down, but I think we'll be finished in about two more years, and it will help. But I look at San Diego. San Diego, it, man, that thing is awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right there in the middle of the street. No, I love light so rail. something yeah. like that. Yeah. I think that's a good start for us, and then we'll get people to see. But oil's not going to let us do it. Airlines not going to do it. As long as those guys are greasing palms, we're screwed. We're never going to see it. Yeah. But all of us have experienced it, so we get it. I wish I can get more people to experience it, so then they'd be on the the uh, evangelistic move to try to get people into it because it is amazing. Uh, on the plus side, though, you know, we are seeing changes in cities, you know, over the last two years, especially a lot more cities putting in protected bike lanes for micromobility. Um, and, you know, the infrastructure bill that was just passed has $65 billion for mass transit upgrades. Um, so those, I mean, even here in Detroit, we've got protected bike lanes in Detroit, in Motown. Yeah, you know, if you that's can put great. protected bike lanes in Detroit, in the city of Detroit, you can put them anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and that's that's the sort of thing we need to do, yeah. You know, because one of the one of the challenges you have, you know, you have uh, is what what's known as induced demand. You know, if you expand a road, more people will put cars in that space, and it'll it'll just fill right up. I mean, you see that on the four hundred five in Southern California, or you know, on the the one hundred one or the you know two hundred eight in the Bay Area. I've had a lifelong fantasy ever since I was a kid that cars would somehow go away and these beautiful paved freeways would be open to bikes and now e-bikes and that we'd all just do that. It would be so nice, but I don't dare ride a bicycle. I want to ride a bike. I love my e-bike. I want to ride a bicycle, but I, I don't dare because I'll get creamed. <laughs> that's, that's why you need protected bike lanes, you know, yeah, where there's yeah. a physical separation yeah. from the cars. Yeah. And, and reduce the number and of lanes for cars. that's what I mean cars. about protected lanes for yeah. autonomous vehicles. I think we might get that as well. Where yeah, the we'll get some freeway, of that. The one against the wall is only for autonomous vehicles. I think you guys are yeah. living in we'll, fantasy We'll get lanes. some of that. I mean, we've, we've, I, I mean I, they I'm are they're currently but... developing 
yeah. uh, a, a, trans, a mobility corridor between Ann Arbor and Detroit. It's about a 40-mile stretch that will have you know, protected lanes uh, for transit and, and uh, AVs and, and uh, other types of vehicles that are transporting multiple people. And you know, that's, um, that, that they've been doing testing on the technology for it for the last year or so. And I think early, uh, next spring they're supposed to start actually uh, implementing that, that road. Uh, along uh, along this route between Ann Arbor and Detroit. I'm crossing my fingers because I would love to yeah, see that. Yeah, that would have been too. helpful because Ohio State could have cried all the way home after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's just cold. That's just cruel. Leo, the, the, the future of transportation is one word. Hoverboards. <laughs> Been there, hey, done that. That's, that's, that's another, another form of micromobility. Our show today brought to you by Ignite. All over the world... I, you, you just listen to our shows. You know this. Companies are being hit by ransomware attacks. Their valuable files held hostage. Of course, forced to decide, do you want to pay the cyber criminals to get them back? On average, even if you pay, it takes 23 days to recover. 23 days of disruption, downtime, and chaos. Just ask the city of Atlanta. One of the early ransomware attacks in 2018 shut down to, for five days. Five days. Ransomware can come for any company in any industry. But small to medium-sized businesses get hurt the worst. With fewer cyber defenses, ransomware has more ways to sneak through. For small to medium-sized businesses, particularly the downtime and the reputational damage could be devastating. Ignite, E-G-N-Y-T-E, is the first ever file system. I love this idea. With sophisticated ransomware detection and recovery tools fully baked in. A file system. It lets your teams create and share documents in Microsoft 365, Google Docs, Slack, Salesforce, DocuSign, whatever, countless others, but still keeps your company's data safe. And I have to tell you, most security software, the user experience is less than perfect. Horrible, frankly. That's not the case with Ignite. Ignite is a security tool your teams will actually love using. And because their ransomware detection and mitigation runs in the background, your team can work without disruption. They don't have to pay attention. But meanwhile, behind the scenes, Ignite is giving companies with limited IT and security staff the power of much larger teams. You'll get total visibility. You'll know exactly where key documents are, who has access. You can automatically detect more than 2,000 ransomware variants and flag unusual behaviors. It's completely turnkey, no on-site hardware, no software even needed. Shut down compromised accounts, quickly identify and restore encrypted files. Restore encrypted files, those are three words you ought to love. All from a single cloud-based platform. And of course, rapid recovery. If ransomware does happen to sneak through, you can restore your files fast to be back up and running in hours, not days. Without having to pay the bad guys a penny. Ransomware attacks are inevitable. Losing your valuable data doesn't have to be. The right preparation is everything. With Ignite, you won't need a specialized security ops team to keep up. The system is always learning, always adapting to new threats. Your team does business just like they always have, and you can rest easy. Learn more about how Ignite can protect your business from ransomware and see why Ignite is rated number one for data security by real customers in G2 Crowd. Start your free trial today. E-G-N-Y-T-E dot com. Ignite dot com. E-G-N-Y-T-E dot com. Give it a shot. I think you'll like it. Start your free trial right now at Ignite dot com. We thank you, Ignite. Welcome to the Twit family. I think this is their first ad. We're great. Glad to have you. And uh, for all you listeners, please check it out. Ignite dot com. Oh, you've managed to make this uh, a show that had plenty to talk about. You guys, you guys, in fact, I haven't even, I've got, how many hours more can we go? I've got so many more stories here. Well, I'm, well, I mean, we could spend another I'm hour talking about rich Corinthian leather. <laughs> <laughs> couple of quick, couple of quickies. Um, the uh, iPhone 5G modem, not going to be from Intel starting in a couple of years. TSMC is going to build it on Apple's designs. That was inevitable. Galaxy Note yep. is officially dead. Samsung reportedly ending production on the Note 20 with no plans for a 2022 Makes sense. model. I guess. They've got a big phone. 
Um, it, it was a proof of concept and they proved the concept. They should they declare victory, yep. mission successful, everywhere. move on. Yeah, they yeah. proved it. Uh, watch this week as uh, Adam Mosseri, the head of Instagram, testifies in front of the Senate on teen mental health. Couldn't ask a better guy. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I love this. The CEO of cosmetics company Lush is deleting Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat accounts because they're worried about teen mental health harms. They say, he says, I'm happy to lose $13 million. This is the right thing to do. Bravo. I saw that. Good for you. I saw that. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, I hope it's not just, not just lip service and you know, comes back in three weeks, but I think that's good. That's doing something about it. Germany is planning to phase out the sale of internal combustion engine vehicles by 2030. Is this going to happen, Sam? Are we are really, really going to be all electric or something, helium? I don't know what, but... Yeah. Yeah? So, but sooner sooner rather than later. Um, you know, it, between somewhere between 2030 and 2040, we will be predominantly Amazing. electric. I mean, you know, just Ford as an example, you know, in the last year, they've gone from projecting will be about 20% EV sales in 2030, to this past spring, they were saying 40%. And now the conversations I've had with people who say internally, their target is now well over 50% by 2030 globally. And they're, they all, they've already said they're going to be 100% across Europe, uh, battery electric vehicles. Now we have an answer to the eternal question. Can rats play Doom? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? They're pretty smart. <laughs> Two rats named, of course, Carmack and Romero have been trained to play Doom. Victor Toth, a neuroengineer, has been working on this for some time. He says, I built a VR setup for rodents from scratch, trained three rats in an automated fashion without manual intervention to traverse a corridor rendered in the Doom 2 engine. Although I did further implement mechanisms to train rats to shoot monsters, I lacked the time <laughs> to accidentally to actually reinforce the behavior. Would you like to watch a little video of rats? I know you would playing Doom. Leo, when future generations ask us what the <laughs> pandemic was like, you just show them this and say, "This is what people had to do to entertain themselves." <laughs> no, no bad guys yet, but. Uh, Given enough time, Victor's working on uh, on it. I think rats really like Nine Inch Nails music is what I, uh, <laughs> what I think. He's just going forward. He's not doing anything training a rat. There's no turns or anything. Poor well, rat. That and, he's, and he's stuck to the, the arm. Where's he going? He's stuck exactly. to an arm. And he has to wear a humiliating striped jacket. <laughs> So all in all, I don't know, that, that looks better than some of my clothes. This is not a victory for the in the annals of science. <laughs> this is not. No. This, you know, this this is an ignoble. This is an ignoble. Oh wait, 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 enemy. No, he doesn't know how to shoot him. He doesn't know how. Come on, rat, shoot him. Shoot him. Oh no, oh, there. Okay. Oh, oh. He's Dude, got that another. That rat works at Ferrell's. That's what that jacket looks. Oh, like. Oh, he shot him. He shot him. Now, he, now he's trying to figure. He's looking, he's like, he doesn't know what to do. Should I go over him? Should I stand there? No, nope, he's, he's a rat. He wants Let's to keep eat him. going. He wants. To, he says, "Wait, well, I got somebody." Hey, there's food. Food. All right. Oh, my Here, okay, enough with the rats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You were supposed to have flying cars by now, Leo. Yeah, no, yeah, but we got rats that can Doom play Doom. And finally, if you if <laughs> this is in response to a uh, pseudoscientist who tweeted the observation that uh, vaccinated English adults under 60 are dying at twice the rate of unvaccinated people the same age. Can it be? Is it possible? He's even got a graph to prove this. In response, a data scientist in the, uh, on the website coviddatascience.com proved that watching the 1984 <laughs> Ghostbusters movie kills people at a much higher rate than people who, they're twice as likely to die as people who watched the latest Ghostbusters movie. The, oh, <laughs> oh, it's that it's that pesky correlation does not equal causation. Yeah, causation. Yeah, it has something to do with the age of the uh, of the uh, people watching it, I suspect. In any event, statistics is hard. But uh, <laughs> that that just proves it. So don't don't believe anybody who tells you not to get the vaccine. Do it for us, please. The, I got my third shot. Yeah, you got boosted. 
I'm yep. getting, like, a couple of weeks ago, for my booster. Monday. You Last got Saturday. yours too? Oh, man. Oh, wait, so are, are you guys, are you flipping? So I, I'm getting my booster when I get back to the States. I did Pfizer, so now I'm going to go with Moderna. Really? I, just I, I got sister-in-law said that, and I was like, no, nah, I'm sticking to all of the same thing because uh, it's just. I, uh, I, went, I went with all Moderna just because, you know, Spike Vax. I mean, come on. What was the fi the name of the Pfizer? You, you got to go with Spike no, no, Vax. Moderna, Moderna is. <laughs> yeah. The 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 yeah, it's, the high price. It's the one spread. that's it's the quality of any vaccine, and that's why yeah. I'm getting another. <laughs> I, I, I want, with Pfizer I want just the in cocktail. case they blend it in any accident. Yeah, I, I want uh, all you know, the vaccines. Viagra like in your uh, vaccine. Yeah, yeah sure. Why yeah, not? just in case. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> 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 There's a joke about four hours in there, but I'm going to leave it out completely. Uh, <laughs> you guys, so much fun. Thank you for making a slow news week uh, something more than interesting, something really inter really great. Thank you. Uh, Doc Rock, YouTube.com slash Doc Rock. Your purple, your magenta, anything, uh, your, your, uh, you, anything you want to plug? No, man, still just uh, hanging away, creating all the things on the YouTube channel. Um, still... Piping away at old ecam, just having a good time. I, I was going to ask. I didn't want to. So you're still doing the ecam? Yes, love it. It is so much fun. We're having a, just a massive good time. And get ready to do vlogmas, which is probably going to mean no sleep till January. <laughs> so there's that. Oh boy, are you still doing the uh, Doc's ecam kit? Is that still available? Oh yes, yes, always. I'm always like out here, just you know. Showing people what to get if you want to build your studio up. And, you know, the funny thing is where I'm getting a lot of the questions is, hey, I'm doing these Zoom meetings. And every time you come on Zoom, you look different. How come everybody like, you know, all of us, we have these things, right? So we look different. So now everybody has to get stuck with this Zoom thing. They're trying to fix their living room or their We don't look different. We look better, baby. Yeah, we look better. They, better. Yeah. 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 And so that's what it is. Everyone's like, how can I look this good on Zoom? And I'm like, I can help you. Just I give can me tell you one thing right away. <laughs> Stop with the phony backgrounds. Have a real oh, background. Right? <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, Sam, <laughs> I know you're not at the lake. <laughs> oh, that is that's the funny. Best. Actually, you've got But see, his lighting screen? his looks good. Yours I looks do. good. <laughs> I, I this is not, that's not a Zoom digital background, though, right? That's coming through your no, future? I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm using OBS and a green screen. Okay, because right, uh, normally somebody moves their head and you see a hole in the green, you know, yeah, in I the know. background. You're, it's very I mean, distracting. You could have fooled uh, me. You really could have I, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on so many Zoom meetings, you know, with, with people or MS teams or, you know, whatever, uh, to, through the course of the week. And, you know, every time they, they're all using virtual backgrounds, you know, or just blurring their background. Every time they move their head, it's, it's so distracting. Yep. So wait a minute. This whole time, were you you weren't in your basement this whole time? I am in my basement, but oh. my office is upstairs. This, oh. uh, this, 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 the other one was was my office. Hey, somebody just go. parked behind you. <laughs> yeah. That that's actually a photograph of my office, which is upstairs. Oh, God, that fooled me completely. Father Robert, you're in a real studio. In the I am in a real studio, and and actually, I was looking at Sam's video, and I could see it in his hair. Yeah, just that's the one place bit, that I'm still yeah, trying to that's tweak. The, that's the, the giveaway. You know how you fix that, Sam? Yeah. Look, then you don't shave my head. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. I, I've, I've never seen it without that. the hat. Oh, my God. <laughs> Either that or just wear a hat, you know. <laughs> yep, that works. One, one of these days, the, what, what's left here will be gone anyway, so it won't matter. Sam, Principal Researcher, Guidehouse Insights, Wheelbearings.media. That's a great podcast. Roberto and, and Nicole are fantastic on that. If you love cars, subscribe. Anything you're gonna you appear every week on the Tech Guy Show? Anything else? Yep. Um, we uh, we actually my colleagues and I at uh, Guidehouse on the transportation research team. Uh, we just started a podcast. We've been doing for a couple of years now. We've been doing uh, every couple of weeks. We we keep a, a internally we keep a tracker of the big news items in the areas we cover, uh, and we have a. a call every couple of weeks to go over some of those and have a conversation about it. And I said, well, why don't we just record this and put it out as a podcast? Ah. So uh, we just we I published the first episode. We'll have another one uh, later this week. Uh, you can find it at ghtransportcast.com. Nice. Uh, and, uh, you know, or and, uh, just look for Guidehouse and or look look for look for me and I'll when the next one's up, um, I will uh, put it on my Twitter and LinkedIn and elsewhere. Nice. Uh, yeah, just follow. What's your Sam? What's your uh, Twitter handle? 
Uh, it's my name, Sam Abu Al Samad. Good luck all, spelling all one that. Word. Okay. A B U E L S A M I D. Correct. Sam is spelled with four M's. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Only Thanks, two. Sam. One Great. in the first name, one in the last. Name. Great to have you, Father Robert Ballas here, the digital Jesuit. God, I miss you. Come visit us if I you miss can. You too. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, I know you're going to have other things to do when you're in town. You got before CES. See, yeah, I, I don't want to bring anything. Oh, back don't to don't video. come back after CES. But maybe yeah. we'll do a call. <laughs> maybe we'll do a call from CES. <laughs> that might be okay. To keep your distance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Zoom, I'll zoom in. You're brave. You're a brave man. DigitalJesuit.com. How's the Minecraft server going? Uh, so it actually. <laughs> Funny story. Uh, there was a flood in the data center, and it blew up the server. Oh no! So now we, we're yeah, we're recovering everything right now. So no Valheim, it's, no uh, no Factorio, no no, uh, no. no, like Rust is still up, Valheim is up, but the Minecraft server it, and it literally drowned. So we, wow. we need to try to yeah. I wow. think we're probably going to lose the entire database. Wow. Unfortunately, because it, it got the backups as well. Oh no! Uh, but no, it's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> Wait a minute! You didn't have offsite backups? We did. Um, now ask me if we verified the offsite. <laughs> oh <backups>. no! <laughs> oh, that hurts. That's yeah, painful. No, that, that was me. Painful. Was totally me. Ooh, I hate I mean, we, like we can go back to like six months before the accident, and at that point, we're saying no. Had you? Not, it's not. Had you? Uh, did you have like fancy builds, or was just people messing around? No, we had fancy builds. Yeah, you had like it the was, Vatican, it was right? Incredible. You had. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. We'll go back to Literally. six weeks. That's better than nothing. No, no, six months. Oh, <laughs> oh, nuts. Yeah. Now, but no, but we're we're working with the community. It actually got to the point where so much of the map had been mined out that some people are saying we wouldn't mind starting over. Start over. You know what? Yeah. They'll just do it again because that's the way that correct. people are. Yeah, correct. That's cool. Yeah. Where can? How would people get involved in that if they want to do that? Uh, well, you know, the easiest thing is to, to go to digitaljesuit.net, uh, or you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash PadreSJ. You'll see all the projects that I'm working on. Uh, we'll, you'll find a nice, easy way to get in, into the community. It's a verified community through Discord. I love it because you, of that. You set up a nice little bot. Yeah. Right. So you don't get nearly as many trolls, and it's a lot easier to deal with those who start trollish behavior. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm, I'm starting up a new show with, uh, with David Hewitt. Who used to play Dr. Rodney McKay in the Stargate universe? He's, you know, he's been in like Shape of Water. He's he's an actor, but yeah, he's also I know. a geek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When's so that? Where's that going to be? Um, we're probably just going to start it on YouTube. We're we're doing the 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 bones for it right now. We think we know what we want. We want it to be sort of an upbeat show, um, like the Eternal Optimist. So don't you know? Not going negative, not going on hating, Good. just showing Good. a love for technology and Good. science. Good. Yeah. I'll be, that'll be fun. I'll look forward to that. Thank you, all three of you. What a pleasure. What a pleasure. We do uh, it's this. Fun. The, yeah, a lot of fun. We do this week in tech every uh, Sunday afternoon right after the Tech Guy show. Uh, that's usually about uh, 2.30 p.m. Pacific, 5.30 Eastern, 22.30 UTC. I say those times because you can watch it live. Uh, oh, 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 Father Robert, There's maybe, maybe your server is also underwater. Oh. Right now, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's them trying to fix everything. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I, I, I turned it over to the mods. I said, "Have fun, go for it," and they're doing everything right so now. So go visit digitaljesuit.com later when it's working. Later, it's still underwater <laughs> yeah. in the basement it's of the underwater. Vatican. Yes. <laughs> Yikes! Yikes! Uh, we do the show uh, as I said at those times, so you can watch live if you go to live.twit.tv. Uh, People like to watch us do the shows live. Of course, you can always get on-demand versions of the show as well at twit.tv. There's a YouTube channel dedicated to each show, including This Week in Tech. Or you can subscribe uh, in your favorite podcast client and get it after the fact. Uh, we've got a lot of shows. Check them all out. Subscribe to them all. Uh, and if there's a show you particularly like, leave us a five-star review. That really helps spread the word. You know, sometimes uh, the newer shows always get more attention on iTunes and everywhere because, you know, they're getting all the new subscribers. Uh, shows like ours that have been around for 15 years uh, often kind of fall through the cracks, even though we still have lots and lots of listeners. I thank you. Uh, so a five-star review helps. Just reminds people, uh, Twit's still here. 
after all these years. Thanks to all our Club Twit members who make this show possible. Twit.tv slash Club Twit. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Another Thank Twit you. is in the can. Bye-bye. Doing the Twit. Doing the Twit.